course, and Sharif, Sean, and Neil for that great interview. Uh, I'm a huge Shark Tank fan, so it was really cool to see Kevin O'Leary live there on the Zoom and the watch comparison. Great video, could not wait to rewatch. Uh, for now, we will do the um, patented uh, Sean roll call. Right now, Darren in Cyprus. Hi, I'm, I'm a Darren Canada. Let's, let's get it going here with the midday. We're going to wait for some people to, um, as Sharif puts it, populate the chat here. Pitchbull, Michael Lloyd. Bob W, Darwin, Ponzi Fonzi, the crazy stitch lady, Noah, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Um, Joshua, a few rhymes with AMC. Everybody is rolling into the chat here. Um, pleased to see it. Patrick Langlois, Aura Alpha, Nimit, Lucas Zhang, Todd Carroll, uh, Fat Figure here, seeing E Designs Art Gallery. Great times. Great to see everybody here um, in the chat. Uh, so now we're going to get kick it off here with a shout out to our sponsor, Surge Trader. We are brought to you by Surge Trader, where traders can get a funded trading account up to 1 million big ones, up to $1 million, and keep up to 90% of the profits. The program has simple rules, no time limits. All you have to do is uh, go to the um, tra surgetrader.com forward slash TTV, that is surgetrader.com forward slash TTV, and use the promo code TTV for 10% off. Uh, fabulous times. Also, Ryan saying, yeah, hi, hi, Ryan. I will show you out, Ryan. Um, yeah, pleased to be here. Happy to be here as always. Uh, just going to get set up. I was, oh, I need to get out of this trade. I'm in a Neo trade and I took my eyes off of it for a second and it decided to die on me. I will address this Neo, um, this short, the straight, not even a short, it's a long. Um, I got in because I thought we were going to kind of, it seemed like a little bit of a dip move, um, and I wanted to take some profit out at 9.56. Quite obviously, that is not happening. I'm going to get out of this one in a jiffy, but I just wanted to put that out here. This is what is um, going on. This is the only trade I've been in all day. Neo, we did have that catalyst with regards to um, the Chinese names having a really good day yesterday, trading the Chinese markets, all of them really strong. I should look at XPeng as well, because I know XPEV was um, popping off this morning. Okay, now we, we, I guess it looks like all these are kind of falling off here. To the downside, this one, I, I know during happening now, I shouted this one out. We were up 8%, um, I want to say, around 10 a.m. So this one was really, really strong. Um, now we're still up about 4%, so still to the upside, but definitely a lot weaker here. Much like Neo, I'm going to give it a couple seconds here. I'm going to wait like one more candle to close below there, and then we will have to make a decision, and the decision will probably be to say bye-bye to Neo. No, no to Neo. Also, um, Tesla here I'll look at because I kind of like the movement we have here. I don't dislike the concept of a Tesla short. And I say that, and I know yesterday I was a little um, quick to draw on some of those Tesla shorts, but we're down on the day in Tesla. And what we're kind of, what I'm noticing is we're kind of falling down, then we're giving, I guess, a little bit of a cushion there, then continuing to fall to the downside. So, I mean, I do like the look of this as a short. I just want to make sure I have a good opportunity to end some kind of built-in, I guess, levels to place like stop losses and to plan my exit. That would be the main goal here. Um, Issa, more in the chat. Yes, Tesla, go bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, indeed, um, this is not this is not a pretty picture for um, our old pal, Stressla. Um, Sorry, I'm just almost yeah, done. No Maybe worries. A, couple more a chart just closed. One of my side charts just closed on me, so go, go, P Pro 8. No, I'm joking. P Pro 8 is fabulous. <laughs> my chart was, I guess, just my Microsoft chart was just in a mood, apparently. But you know what? I want to look at Microsoft <laughs> with regards to that. Um, that news we had with the New York Times, uh, this was from yesterday, with the New York Times suing um, Chat GPT, or not Chat GPT, OpenAI and Microsoft. Um, yeah, I, this one, again, this could look like it could be a short related situation. What I would like to see is, you know what I'd like to see? Lower highs, lower lows. Bang. Um, something that I really enjoyed as well that I was overhearing Sean talk about this morning, and this is something I really should have, like, you know, thought of earlier, but sometimes you need to hear other people say stuff. Well, Sean was like, you know, we're not shorting strong names. We're going to short weak names, right? I mean, I'm paraphrasing a lot here. But I think that was really important for me to hear because I feel like I kept trying to find opportunities for shorts yesterday where there really weren't any or we were really strong on the day, and I thought I saw a dip, and it just wasn't there. So I'd like to be a little bit more cognizant, catch myself doing that, don't catch myself slipping. And don't. I guess you aside, how about that? But yeah, so um, shout out to Bad Baby or Danielle Bergoli, uh, whichever you choose. Um, yeah, Neo's still kind of holding up around 938, which was about going to be my point of exit. So we'll, I don't want to be too hasty here on Neo. 
Um, All right, I'm good. Yeah, but now we are good to go with. Oh, um, I'm still not oh, good. To go. Sorry. In a moment, we will be good to talk to um, Kevin O'Leary interviewer Sharif um, in just a moment here. But yeah, it's. Um, let's see what's going on in the chat over here. Um, PLTR, you see people say how many people sold PLTR to buy Tesla. Um, I know, I think Sean was in PLTR earlier, I believe. Let's look at Palantir. Oh, Palantir actually could be flat top breaking. This looks a Scotia sending wedgish. You know what? I don't, I do not dislike the idea of Katina Man uh, is uh, discouraging you from going short Palantir. Oh, I was gonna go long Palantir. Oh, there you go. Because okay. it looks like an ascending wedge. Yeah, well, there's yeah. a beautiful look there. Um, all right, Thank guys. You. Yeah. All right. What's going on with the production team? Hey, uh, welcome back. Every Well, for me, welcome back. You guys have been here. How's everybody doing? Second last day of the trading year. And uh, who could complain about where we are today, even though we're just uh, flat right now on the NQ. We're going to talk about the future. We're going to talk about some of the mega cap names coming up. But uh, there's also been several small cap gappers. Sidhu, you heard Neil's little spiel on that this morning, which I thought was hilarious. S-I-D-U halted to the upside 87.87%, 87, 87, 87 uh, having done about only 4 million shares on the day. Small float, so be careful with that one. We're gonna be talking about some of the names here. I'm looking at some of the microchip names. ARM looks really good. Again, surprise, surprise. AMD up again, 2%. NVIDIA knocking on the door, 500 yet again. When are we gonna get a decided break of that NVIDIA 500 and hold above there? Every single time we come into that 500 area on NVDA, we seem to find our way back down some way somehow. Here is the look on NVIDIA, up marginally about half a percent on the day, but uh, you know, moving up ever so slowly here. We'll talk a lot about that. Guys, I have not had an opportunity to really look at any equity names today. Been doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So we're going to try to get in uh, the uh, the flow of things as we move on. Uh, tell me what you guys are looking at, and then we'll have um, we'll have a look at that. Maybe you guys give me some trade ideas, Mr. Duckets. I like that name. I love that name. Yeah, Mr. Duckets. Uber could be setting up to run if market rebounds. You know, Uber's just been, well, not just, recently added to the S&P 500 as they were doing a, a little bit of rebalancing there. That's, you know, typically a very bullish uh, event for um, an equity name. And we're going to be able to see, you know, kind of can Uber become that, you know, Meg 8? Can they, you know, the, one of the Meg 9s, maybe the Meg 10, looking good here. Just went green on the day, up 0.02%. What I'm looking at here is a series of higher lows and a possible flat top break, but obviously some uh, earlier price action around the bell, uh, around 9.30, boosted us up into 63 and a half. We're clawing our way back through 63 and a third here, but we're definitely coming in to this crest over here. If we can take this crest, it'll look good because we put in a series of higher lows to precede that and breaking through this consolidation area top here at 63 and a quarter. So Uber, as the OB1 Kenobi likes to say at times, is uh, you know marching a little bit up, but still flat on the day. So really nothing too, too crazy here. I saw Mullen, uh, like number two or three on my gap scanner when I was at the big desk. I was like, Arr? what's going on with this? Mullen doing um, Mullen things, I guess, after that whatever reverse split. What was it, 100 to one? I think it was 100 to one, We talked about I that believe. earlier, right? 100 to one reverse split on MULN. And this is a good looking chart. I got to tell you, on the day, it was the dead one yesterday. It didn't really do much, Adair. I mean, it danced a little bit for maybe uh, the highs there around 12 bucks, came back down into the pivot point around 10 and a half. But today is definitely an outlying day for MULN. But I got to tell you, it looks quite volatile and spready for a $14 name. So I'm going to be careful with this one, to say the least. Let's put in the ticker here so everybody can follow along. M-U-L-N, Mullen, the EV company, was a penny stock. I mean, literally pennies, not that long ago. And then the reverse split kind of got them back into compliance uh, with the NASDAQ. And now they've been running up on that ever since. No real catalyst, is there? No, they did deliver. They delivered some vans or something like that. Here, here's the, the headline here. Mullen delivers 50 Class 1V Class 1 EV cargo vans and invoices. Randy Marion Automotive for a cool 
1.68 milli. Uh, that'll get you started. Uh, they do intend to deliver about 285 of these Class 1 vehicles. That's a bit of an anticlimactic name. Class one vehicle. That's it. I mean, that's very like Tesla, like the Model Three. But at least that's the Model, Model S. Class. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just kind of like clap. It's I know. not as interesting as like the ET9. Do you remember like the, the names of the cars in the eighties? The Integra. Yeah. Or you the know Chevy the Camaro. Legend, the Camaro. Yeah. yeah. There were these were names that could get people. You know. They got yeah. people going, but uh, I don't know how I feel about this class one vehicle. Any event, we're just, uh, you know, we're being a little bit cynical. Mullen to close fiscal first quarter with over $6 million invoice for these class one vehicles. So look, we make fun of Mullen sometimes, you know, uh, we, tongue in cheek stuff, but really they are delivering vehicles here. And if they're going to become a serious company, we're going to treat them like a serious company. Right, right now they're doing the dance with no pants though at that $14 air, just a smidge below, trying to hold that. 10 period EMA, which is the light green uh, line on my chart. Let's see if they can hold up here, or have we done as good as we could do on MULN with that 1470 high there? Yeah, I mean, MULN has been one to watch lately. It's been really mullen if it wants to go any further. So you're going to have to see what it decides to end up doing. We need like there. a pun animation for you. I think that I think that would be very apropos. Yeah, I know. Like, it's going to be being hit more than the bangs, quite frankly. But I, I do think uh, a very appropriate animation for you would be something pun related. Because yeah. you are like the queen of puns. I like making the puns. I'll, I'll, oh. take, I'll take that throne. I'll take the crown. Oh. Also, PLTR, legitimately, go Palantir, breaking out of this flat top wedge, ascending wedge, flat top break. I just married two terms accidentally there. But breaking out of this before I could even get in, I was trying to get filled around 1766, and Palantir said, ha, you thought. And then was like, no, you thought wrong, girl, and then moved way to the upside. Really rude. Uh, yeah, it was very unkind of it, I have to say. <laughs> it did not care about my feelings. But, um, ooh, Von Barr saying big pun here. I like that. Oh, that's um, that, that should be, yeah. Yeah. That would be interesting if that was part of the animation. I think well, that's yeah. pretty cool. No, and I love that, too, because it's yeah. also a bit of a wrap. Um, okay. Throwback to, to big pun. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, Palantir um, up now. It was up, like, I think one point. Early, early ones. Now we're up 1.6% on Palantir. This is a good look. I'm sad I missed that, but you know, there could be another long opportunity here. Also looking at it, I'm thinking actually that this is less of a bull, um, I guess less of an ascending wedge, more of a bull flag, because look, we did have this move to the upside. So if you're going to chart this, let's say this flagpole began around 1745, and then we ended around 1770. So that gives us about 25 cents of movement to the upside. So I think this is a, a really good look for sure. If we, let's say we broke it around this 1765-ish, then that gives us until about 1790 for some profit takers. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. Obviously not patterns come, not all patterns come it up. to fruition, but I think if they do, I do, um, you know, I like the look of this over here. Um, also, this one, I need to switch up my side charts. I still have Warner Brothers on my side chart from a couple days ago. But the reason I find this one interesting is um, look at this, like, the kind of, uh, formation we're making here. This is definitely a move to the downside. Four, um, four mil is the volume, so it is workable. It's not like an Eli Lilly type of volume, which unfortunately Eli Lilly's not moving much today. But yeah, we're up 0.44%, so we are slightly positive on the day. I'll have to see if we turn this dip into a rip to the upside or if we flop to the downside. Gonna have to wait and see here. But yeah, no, I think Warner Brothers is a decent look. This one has been a little bit down in the dumps right now, so I think I, think I could maybe take advantage of that opportunity. Also, NVIDIA sitting pretty around VWAP, so I'm just gonna keep an eye and see what we do here. Um, I am noticing a bit of a, you know, we're definitely chopping and trading around this 496.5, so we'll have to see if this ends up being a long or a short. Either way, I'm gonna be very cautious because NVIDIA does not care about your feelings, much like the rest of the market. It most certainly doesn't. All right, Shannon Dub wants us to look at IWN, but before I do that, the Katina man wants to update the people following his trade on the Affirm. It has now become an official member of the dollar club. So make sure you're following that and make sure to keep your, uh, your well, make sure to keep joining in, in the new year because that, you know, issue, let's call it an issue that 
is uh, part of the midday show where you can't see what the big kahunas are trading. That is all going to change in, like, let's say, hopefully a matter of days, weeks, where we have that dual channel. It's going to be a parallel channel. Um, it's going to be an information-only channel. It's going to have headlines. It's going to have the big kahunas positions, what price, what time. Do we have, uh, do we have that? If you're able to, Fabian, uh, what price, what time, all these uh, of, of their trades, where they got in, where they got out, their average cost basis, et cetera. And that will alleviate some of the issues. There it is. There's a little preview. Uh, the Chilean nightmare on the ones and twos. You can see there in the top right. Oh, go back. Are we allowed? Yeah, there we go. The Chilean nightmare, putting that back up. You'll see. It, this might not be the exact way it's going to look, but it's going to be something akin to this. We're still working on it. It should have been launched earlier, but the, the support team that uh, would support this channel was on vacation. So we didn't want to launch it without having the proper support team to back it up. But it is basically almost a finished product. So make sure to check us out in the new year. We are on the second last trading day of the year anyway. Dare It's been a hell of a 2023, I got to tell you. All right, back to work. IWM, so we can look uh, for that for Shannon Dub. You heard Kevin O'Leary talk about uh, the Russell 2000 and the relative outperformance as of late for small caps and this rotation that we've been having. Let's have a look at the daily on IWM because we broke through a key resistance level here, Ram Ram. When we broke through that 198, essentially it was a 200 top. Let's be real. Um, because 200 is that psychological resistance. We had been up here umpteen amount of times. Look at this consolidation area. My goodness. From May 2022, this looks like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. This is, this is range consolidation here, guys. 200 to the high side with 160, give or take, maybe that 162, which I'd say 160, uh, to the downside. So $40 range on the IWM for how long? Now, we're finally breaking and holding above that 200 area. Not just a quick wick and then a see you later, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. No, we are closing above that 200. So where do we move up to? Well, look at this consolidation area over here. Going back from January 2021 to November 2021 when Papa Powell got on the mic at, uh, I think, one of the Senate hearings. I don't know if it was the House or Senate, and said inflation isn't transitory. And then you know what happened after that. The market sank for all of 2022, essentially. So the high end of this range that we, uh, we were doing the dance here, around 235, let's say 230 to 235. The low end of that range, if my computer will stop freezing, is about that 210 area. So we got a bit of a $10 gap, you could say, from the breakout area uh, that we, the consolidation breakout area over here to the actual support area, previous support area that we uh, range from from January 2021, uh, January 2021 to November 2021. So $10 worth of range, we're about that 205 right now. That doesn't mean we stopped here. But it just means, you know, be on the lookout for possible resistance at this 210 on IWM. Uh, you know, we talk often about it on the show. Somehow, some way, support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. There's a reason behind that, by the way, a very logical reason. We don't have to get into it now. But, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that 210 if you are involved in the Russell IWM or any derivative thereof. It is a good look. Uh, I got to tell you, back to Mullen here, though, guys, because we were talking about this one, possibly giving up the ghost. And as I was yapping, it made a new high a day, $14.88. and is now knocking on the door of that $15 area. Let's get this chart out of the way over here and look at what the time and sales is doing on MULN. Because I got to tell you, I looked at this last week and it was quite spready. Now, let's see what it's doing right now. Three penny spread, quite respectable for a $14 name. Two penny spread at the moment. So maybe this one gives us a bit more now, seven pennies. So it, it does fluctuate from a little bit uh, wider to a little bit narrower. We're going to have to watch this for a little bit more time to kind of get a feel for the name. But the chart pattern looks awfully good. It's given you multiple opportunities on retracements. Uh, the initial one happened in here around 10, 10 o'clock. We got a bit of a retracement off that 1280 down into 1220, but then a new high comes in and a higher low. Same business between that 10, 
10.30 to about 10.35, we have a couple of minutes of retracement. We put in a higher low, and then lo and behold, a higher high comes in there vis-a-vis -vis that 13.60 60 touch, pardon me. And then we're going, you guys get the trend. Uh, essentially, we're just making higher highs and higher lows, but I feel like the bamboozlement is starting to happen a little bit more over here. Let's just say from 11 o'clock onwards, it hasn't been as uh, you know, stair-steppy to the high side. There's been more uh, of these larger candle wicks with smaller bodies, larger wicks. That usually implies volatility and uh, a bit of a tug in the war between buyers and sellers here. So be careful with MULN on the day because you could find yourself on the wrong end of this trade real quick, but it is definitely on my radar and I definitely will be keeping an eye on it. I want to mention SIDU halted to the high side. Again, SIDU, a cool 108%. Let's pull up that bad boy on a different screen over here. Small cap gapper du jour, and I did appreciate Neil's uh, story about that in the drunk tank. Oh, that was really That funny. was hilarious. See you next week. So, Neil, quick question. Your friend's name is not Sidhu. It's the dude who he met in the drunk tank was... Yeah, yeah, you don't need to do that. Yeah. The story of how he ended up in the drunk tank is as good as the story, and... Uh, do you care? To, well, I'll leave that for the afternoon show because that's your story. I want to steer your glory. Yeah, exactly. Well, Neil will have that uh, story for you in the, after, the closing show. So make sure to stick around, Adara. 108% Sidhu halted to the high side. Yeah, Sidhu is wild. I noticed this one in the big desk and was like, what am I seeing? What is occurring? Sidhu has been um, a monster today. Yeah. Um, definitely moving indeed. I'm also seeing some mentions of... Um, Shopify in the chats. Let's see if we can shop till we drop. Um, shop is to the high side of about 0.6%. I like the look of this. I would like a dip buy better. And then I could just jump in there, get in my shopping bags and load Shwoopa. up the cart. But yeah, look at Shwoopify. <laughs> Sharif just said. <laughs> so you said, or did I hear that wrong? Yeah, Sharif said Shwoopify, which I really enjoyed. Um, we're we're out putting each other over here. Oh but yeah, boy. beautiful upward trend, although not beautifully drawn by me here on Shopify. I really like the look of this. I'm just kind of bouncing off and down these levels. If we kind of come at or near this 760, 765, and I see signs of moving upward, I may hop in here and take a swim for a dip buy. Take a swim? Yeah, we'll take a swim and like the dip. Like, you know, when you take oh, okay. a dip and the swimming. Very nice. Didn't really work, That's but okay. I tried. Um, swoop, there it is, says Luke Parent. Yes. Also, um, Dave Pagden mentioning PYPL, flat top breakout. Let's take a look at PYPL. He rhymes with AMC's like, is she even old enough to know these references? LOL, shop till we drop. You'd be surprised how much Adira knows about like ages before she was even born. Yes. She's quite well versed, not just in music, but in popular culture as well. I don't know why. Like she knows the Batman show from the 60s, probably because your dad likes My it, My dad's right? a yeah. huge fan. My dad, like yeah. I was raised on the Batman show, but yeah, a lot of it, I just listen to old rap. Yeah, yeah, that's your jam. And watch old movies. Sorry to interrupt you. No, it's okay, I, I, you know, I'll chat. But yeah, so PayPal though, looking really good. Almost actually up pretty much the same amount of Shopify, which is kind of funny. But yeah, PayPal looks like we broke that flat top without me being present there. Um, yeah, we had kind of two interesting levels for me for PayPal for a long, at least intraday. This pre-market area of the 63 that we've just swooped above, and the other area is, um, I guess, just slightly below it, the 62.95, because that was kind of where we had that top we just broke above. Overall, the theme for PayPal right now, higher highs, higher lows. How high can we go? We do not know. Well, I mean, I'll see. I, 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 I legitimately like the look of PayPal. But let's see, um, daily, okay, daily chart. Yeah, PayPal has been a beast to the upside. Look at this. Um, starting October 30th, I guess around when all the stocks had their November to remember, PayPal in a really nice upward channel here. Um, and you know what's going to be interesting is look at this. I spy a potential area of resistance. So this 64, 40 area, we're getting close. And that was where we had that big swoop, um, this fall from grace here around September 15th, 2023. So we'll have to see what we do here because I think this could be, I mean, obviously not all levels are going to come to fruition. I think, though, that this could be an interesting level just to have an eye on, just to watch out for, for um, our good pal PayPal, everybody's pal PayPal. Because this, um, the 6440-ish was definitely, I think, an area of resistance earlier. We'll have to see if that resistance comes back in play. Yeah, good Should call. PayPal move back to the upside? Nima also in the chat mentioning uh, Boeing. Let's look at Boeing. 
rocket ship. Oh yeah, it has, has been. been Boeing on the daily. Is it rocket shipping today? It looks like we're to the downside. Yeah, so the daily, I'm just, we're, we're on the daily. We'll start with the daily. Yeah. But I was saying this, I think, yesterday or the day before. I said, Boeing looks like it's in a bit of a consolidation area. We'll have to see what we do. And what we did was fall. I wonder if this is a, a cup and bit. handle pattern setting up where we get oh. that big curl. Like, it's a V rather yeah. than a U. So not kind of a weird cup. You wouldn't put that on the table. <laughs> yeah, Because it, it wouldn't like, stand up. Drink. Exactly. Yeah. But usually this move up and then sideways move, Adara, usually results in uh, another continued move up. Maybe not with the same vigor that yeah. we had on this, this way bigger. up. This was a monster move. I mean, it, geez louise. But yeah, I do want to keep my eye on the consolidation area if, if it's going to be one of those ones where we get that, uh, yeah. that uh, cup and handle pattern. That's a wicked move to the downside for today, though. Oh, my gosh. I keep okay, Boeing and PayPal and Shopify all in my little list here because, I mean, these are all stocks I would be interested in regardless. And I think, too, thank you to the chat for everybody putting in their things they're trading or the things they're kind of keeping an eye on because, yeah, Boeing looks like a big quadunk to shout out to Sharif there. And I think, you know, a profit-taking area for me would probably be partially at this 257.75. Why? Because that would be where we kind of made our last low. Then I would probably save a piece for the dream in case we make a lower low, because we're a fan of that. But yeah, so I, I do not dislike the look of Boeing to the downside. Right now, this, um, this rocket ship is kind of, the wings are a little bit shaky here, falling to the downside. All right. It looks like Ram Ram was asleep. Look, look down and her Calling hands her on her head and the poor, did you sleep enough yesterday? What's going on over there, bro? Um, guys, this is a great look here on the NQ. Um, possible double bottom? I mean, I, you don't really like these chart patterns, to be honest, you guys know how I feel about uh, chart patterns on, uh, on the future, but this is a hell of a double bottom here. It, it's defending 17.1. 17.1 also happens to be the lovely pivot point, the green dotted lines on my chart are the pivot points and the derivatives thereof, whether support or resistance. But I do really like this look over here, 17.1 hold. However, we did just reject that VWAP on this last candle over here at the 10.45 minute candle, w did reject that VWAP. So look at this range, Adara. I want, you, I want to show you this because, like, I mean, I don't have anybody else to kind of... Uh, I like looking at things. Yeah. yeah, look at this. So we have the pivot point hold. We gap above the pivot point, right? So we're, we're opening up over here. So we're right away, you're thinking bullish, yes. right? Based upon how you're supposed to use pivot point. Yeah. You're thinking bullish. You come down into the green, the dotted green, which is a pivot point, we hold. And then look at what this. First area we reject off, R1. That's a clean rejection one. too. Yeah, it's a good look. And then look at this yesterday. I mean, R1 was respected yesterday. The pivot point was respected yesterday. Whether I like it or not, these are, you know, <laughs> I mean, like yeah, yeah, I mean, because I, I feel like I hadn't used these despite knowing about them. And, you know, I was obviously not using all the tools in my toolkit there. But let's see what we do at 17.1. If we hold 17.1 and we break above this VWAP area, this might be an interesting long from around 17.125 into that possible 17.1 mid 40s area, at least here to R1. So I want to see if we can break and hold above uh, VWAP. You know, getting in here would also not be a bad idea. I would have to risk about 15 to 19 points. I would basically give it to this low over here, right? And what I wouldn't want to see in this particular case is a newer low. The newer low comes vis-a-vis -vis that 17,103. So just a smidge above 17,1. Uh, I, ideally, I'd like the pattern to manifest. I'm talking about the double bottom pattern and for a break of this neckline over here at 17,144. Uh, but that may or may not happen. It is going to be likely a low volume, low, uh, you know, trading day because we are winding down the year and there's still a lot of people on vacay until uh, New Year's Eve. So I don't want to jump into this trade too quickly and kind of have that kind of confirmation bias. I'm seeing what I want type thing. But you know, there are a lot of things, a lot of the stars are aligning here. The double bottom, the hold of the pivot point, the hold of 17.1, the rejection off R1. So I like it. Uh, I want to see if I can weasel my way into this trade some way, somehow. But I just, I don't want it to be so far removed away from my stop, like getting in at 17,125 and then having to put my stop at 17,102. 
it just skews the risk to reward. So I'd like a little dip down, maybe into 17, 110, in interest, whatever area. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll put in a little dip trade down there. We'll see, we'll see. But I, I do like, I'm keeping my eye on the future, see if we can uh, make our way back up at least to R1. We're still in the green here on the NQ, only marginally though, Adair, 0.04%. Ponzi dang Fonzi. NQ below the IB medium, bro. You're not wrong, my man. You are absolutely right. Shout out to Dan the Man Emmons. I don't know where the hell that dude is, but he hasn't been around in a minute. Hopefully, he'll join us at uh, some point. Sean was telling me something about him, but uh, Dan Emmons would have me look at this chart over uh, this candle over here and tell me, Sharif, you're below the IB low, uh, this being the IB high. Obviously, the, um, um, the initial balance uh, high and low, which is very good. Thanks for pointing that out, Ponzi. I appreciate you there. What's the yellow volume bar? Oh, the yellow volume bar means an equilibrium between buy and sell. So if the candle is green, there was, me there was more buying in terms of volume in that particular candle. And if it's red, obviously the, the opposite is true. When it's yellow, it means that there was, an, oh, I don't know if it's an exact equilibrium or if you have to be off by like, say a few hundred shares, but that's what the yellow one is. Thanks for asking that question. Uh, big. Kyle Burdett, my man Sharif, you don't consider that bear flag on the NQ five minutes. That, see, you're seeing a bear flag and you're not wrong, Kyle. Like there's this move down right over here and then you're doing a bit of a, a bear flag over here. You could also look at it as a double bottom, couldn't you? Right, but the double bottom here really hasn't manifested whereas the bear flag has. So I kind of see your point on that. I'm gonna pack my patience. I think I want an entry near 17.1 and near the pivot point so that I can have a way better risk to reward. I don't wanna just you know, get in willy nilly super quick. We'll have to see how this uh, ends up working out. Uh, Nick Dub, can you please look at Square? Yes, I will uh, look at Square. You wanna have a look at Square yeah, for Nick Dub? Yeah, look at Square. I will, will I set up my the, orders? Um, I addressed this um, Tesla short I'm in. We got short at 259. It's going okay so far. Bang. I have no complaints. I'm trying to get profit takers. Just, you know, if I can do 30 cents in the money, I will not complain. Like I said, I'm not trying to overstay my welcome in these mega caps lately because I've had Maybe. my best success when I've been scalpy. And so what we're trying to do here is scalp. So while we scalp, while that while that cooks or whatever, while it bakes, uh, we will look at squ okay. square. Um, yeah, I'm assuming longer time frame, so I'm just gonna pull that up here. Um, daily though, actually not a bad look for square. Um, definitely some higher lows and some higher highs. But I'll pull up the daily chart. Oh, the daily on Square is, is is a nice look, I have to say. Ooh, accidentally zoomed in. Here we go. So you know what? What I immediately see here is look at this. We are very much coming into a potential really? area of resistance. So this 80, yeah. 55 area, I would keep an eye on because that's from where we yeah. fell from Grace earlier. Oh. Also, you know what happened again where we fell a little bit as well? Again, this um, 80, 81 area. We were, to be fair, we were already kind of in a downtrend, but we did have kind of a dip here. So I would definitely keep my eye on this 80 area here for sure, Nick Dub on the daily chart. Also, if I zoom out a little bit further, what I'm noticing that is interesting is um, then I would say the next area of resistance is kind of another sort of double top here. This. Um, just before 90, I want to say this 87 area. This was also a little double topish for Square. Definitely kind of a bit of, we had a downtrend, then we kind of got into a bit of a flat channel here. Then we broke far below that around September 11th, 2023, <clears throat> fell lower. Then we fully broke out. Now we're to the upside, but I think A, a break of the 80, and B, a break of that 85, 87 area. That'll be clear move for bullishness for Square, at least you know from what I can see. No investment advice here. But um, let's also look at the weekly on, um, on Square. So here's the weekly on Square. Um, Square and the weekly is really interesting. Um, you definitely have that kind of flat top here. One, two, three, four touches around this 80. Same kind of area of interest. You need to break out, I think, for Square of that 80 before we get kind of a sense of what's going on there. Also, John Singh saying Nike looking interesting. So here's Nike. Oh, you got in that M and Q long. Yeah, I did. Oh, nice. Uh, I did. I uh, just uh, wait for that. I wanted to mention Adair that Mullen just.
Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Ram Ram. Um, Mullen just tanked, guys, breaking down there below that 13 and a half. It's doing the dance here around 13. 40 so be careful with mullen well over 30 percent at its high is now breaking down into that 21 percent area i'm seeing that it is at vwap here let me just double check it yes it is on my other chart it is at vwap so let's see how it dances around these levels does it find some support at vwap you know again like i always tell adara and obviously she's she's got it down basically at this point with her use of vwap but you know, whether or not the particular instrument in question respects VWAP is based on the day, based on the time, and based on the instrument itself. So uh, it's not a hard and fast rule that you will find support or resistance at VWAP, but let's be alert to the fact that we are at volume weighted average price and there could be some support here on MULN. Um, Big James Dell was asking, where can I find short floats? Is this something with my broker? This, that, or the other, I gotta tell you, with my broker, unless I don't know where to look, Trader Workstation doesn't have short float. Thankfully though, I do have a Trade Ideas account, shout out to the NOS boss and his crew, and this is what I get over here. So, let's look at the short float on Square, because uh, Adair was just talking about Square. I hit SQ in this, um, I think this is called uh, the company. Uh, Neil, what is this uh, area on the Trade Ideas called? It has a name. Right? Company details. Company information. Company information. There we go. So uh, if you guys are subscribers with uh, Trade Ideas and you can use the uh, code TRADERTV25 for 25% off um, to get your account today with Trade Ideas, this is where it is, James. Look at that. Short float 4.12. Now, not everything you got to pay for because there are other options as well. What's going on here? Uh, you can go to floatchecker.com. Uh, that's another free source. I'm not vouching for its uh, its accuracy. It gives you, di oh, it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, they've been down. Okay, so I don't know a free site anymore because my the free one, say it again? Finviz. Uh, yeah, thanks for that, Neil. Finviz, let's have a look at Finviz over here. Let's see if we can, uh, we go square. And then I think it's like you have to look at ownership. Where is short float? Short float ratio, there it is. Short float right there, James. 4.12. So this one's not going to give you uh, different sources like Float Checker did. Float Checker told you, oh, Ameritrade says this. Oh, Yahoo Finance says that. And then you could kind of decide who you want to listen to. This one just gives you a one data point. It's Finviz. But if you want the real deal, I do suggest that you have a look here at Trade Ideas. Uh, very, very uh, efficient and accurate system. Let's have a look at the short float on Mullen because we were just yapping about Mullen over here. Mullen, 14 and a third percent, 14.29 to be more exact, short float on Mullen. The float is a cool 340 million shares. So you can do the math about what 14.29% is of that. But that's where I get that information. I personally don't have it on my own broker, sadly enough. But uh, yeah, that's uh, th one of the perks at working for Trader TV is that you get uh, you get these perks. Now I'm involved in the future here, and I gotta tell you, um, you know it's uh, about a point or two against me at the moment. The out for this in terms of a stop is this area right here. This makes a newer low. I'm out. Doesn't mean I won't get in again, especially if it holds 17.1. Ideally, I don't want to get in and get out uh, and back in on the hold of 17.1, but. This is where I'm going to be out over here around 1702, 1703. I'm Gonzino. I don't like the fact that we're getting lower highs all throughout. I'm kind of basing it on the fact that we held 17.1 and we put in a bit of a double bottom. A bit of a riskier trade, but it's only about, you know, 10 points worth of risk or so if I get it, le even less actually. Uh, well, a little bit more, sorry, 12 points worth of risk or so if I have to wait to 1703. We'll see how this one ends up manifesting, but um, yeah. Good look there. All right, let's move back up. AJ, Neo, possible head and shoulders on the five minute. Let's look at NIO. Okay, let's bring in the trusty side chart. NIO, boy. <laughs> All right, Neo. You know, again, you know, a company that I've been kind of impressed with as of late, possible head and shoulders on the five minute. Well, it's not a bad look. You're not wrong there. You are absolutely not wrong, AJ. Uh, just because you see, though, a head and shoulders doesn't mean, in fact, it is one or it's going to manifest the price action that a head and shoulders should, uh, should manifest. What you see here is a nice move up 
preceding it. Why is that important? Because a head and shoulders pattern is a reversal pattern. So when you see the actual head and sh shoulders, not the inverse head and shoulders, you expect a reversal of the trend preceding the pattern, which was an uptrend. We got off that $9.10 area and we knocked on the door of 957. That's a high day. So what I would say is look for the break in the neckline, a decided break of the neckline on a closing basis on whatever you're charting off. If you're charting off a five, wait for a closing basis on the five, and then your stop. If you want to keep it tight, baby, keep it up there 945 or so. If you're feeling more risky, you put it at the high of day. But uh, this is something Adara and I have talked about and many times in the past. Where do you place a stop on the neckline breakdown on the head and shoulders? Is it above the right shoulder or is it above the head? There's really no hard and fast rule. It's going to depend on your risk appetite and it should be influenced by the risk to reward ratio, which means you have to do a calculated analysis of how much downside potential there is. And if you're basing it off the pivot point over here, a neckline breakdown around 935 takes you to about 913, whatever that math is. Is that enough? That's more than one to one if you're going to put it above the head. So if you want a one to one, you place it at the head. You want something less than one to one, obviously. You place it above the right shoulder, but you are more prone to getting stopped out. Um, what are we doing on the future? Oh, baby, we just pumped up on the future, but we're, we're still not in the clear, Dara. We need, uh, uh, we need higher lows and higher highs. It's not just enough to get a nice couple of green candles here. We need to move up, likely through VWAP. VWAP is going to be my first target to see, do we break above the volume-weighted average price? And then we're going to start talking about higher highs, which takes us into that 17,145 discussion. We're not there yet. Let's pack our patience, see what we get there. The Boring Man, love the name. Um, Market Watch shows short flow too. Thank you for that. Didn't know about that. Market Watch, another site that off, is used often by retail traders. Yeah, Market, Market Watch is a good one. I, I did not know they had short flow though, so that's very cool. I am in this Tesla short still. I am trying to pack my patience, but I think the packages are getting kind of lost in the mail here. I'm losing my patience a little bit with Tesla. We continue to fight over this 259. I think 259 was a good point of entry on this, but I just would like it to decide what it wants to do so I can decide what I want to do. Usually you it. say it decides what it wants to be with when it grows life. up. Yeah, or yeah. Well, <laughs> you said that true. for a I've while, yeah. Before, yeah. yeah. Um, so Tesla, yeah, well, well I, We'll have to wait and see what it does, what it, if it wants to be when it grows up. <laughs> I think right now it, it does not know if it, what it wants to do. Um, its life path seems uncertain for its adulthood. Um, we're going to have to wait and see there. Um, so there was a super chat from Garrett's Invest Co. Um, I like that name. It was a 199 super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat. Mbot, fully robotic surgeries to come in 2024. Shocked emoji. So let's look at M bot. Okay, yeah, I like this. Um, this was sorry for the pause that I was trying to take in this whole chart. Um, this I'm gonna draw this because trend lines. Look at this really gorgeous trend line on the day, up 43%. Honestly, I don't dislike this trade. I don't usually do small caps, but I will if there is, um, if I'm seeing something I like. Like there was actually um, a small cap I did, uh, I did IREN last week, I-R-E-N. So I will occasionally, if there's movement I like, if there's a catalyst, I want to see if there is a specific daily catalyst on this beyond general. Oh, yes. Okay. So the company announced the um, completion of its GLP pivotal preclinical study. Um, done under the guidelines of FDA required levels of planning using a porcine model. Okay, so that's really cool. Biotech um, here, Microbot Medical. I really like the look of this. Um, yeah, we'll have to see if we kind of continue to make higher highs and higher lows right now. Absolutely, we have been doing that. So let's look at the daily because sometimes the daily on these small caps can be um, very interesting. Here we Oh, that's the five minute again. What am I doing? Daily chart here, um, wow, wow, okay, this is great. I mean, we, we broke out of that, um, that uh, flat trend line, that flat channel in one fell swoop. We're getting also very close to breaking out of another key area of consolidation here, this 2.230 uh, area, so let's not draw trend lines. This 230 I think will be really interesting if we break above that because that would be making a higher high. 
We already broke out a trend line one. Can we break out a trend line two? I mean, it's a really good look on the day. It's a strong catalyst. We'll have to see. But also, if I go back even further, it looks like this um, consolidation area of this 220 has been, 220, 230 has been really key in the past. So you know what I mean? So I do not want to, I, I, I would be very careful as we get close to that 220, 230 area in MBOT, but very much a good look. Uh, strong resistance though, um, I like the look of this. MBOT, thank you very much, Garrett's Invest Co. for the super chat. They are always appreciated. Um, Tesla kind of getting away from me just a skosh over here, so I might have to revisit that. I guess it decided what it wants to be when it grows up is a long, <laughs> which it would have consulted with me before it made this life choice. You I'm know? happy that Kevin but, was like super bullish on Tesla. And, yeah, no, And he's cool. able to kind of like look past all Elon's eccentricities. I don't care if he's eccentric. That's I fair. really don't. Um, you know, and he, he, he's a genius. And we, with geniuses, you have to allow them some latitude. Yeah. That's just the way that I see it. It's my personal opinion. It's not obviously. Anything well, a lot of these like billionaires too, like Zuck is a little yeah. bit eccentric. I was reading a profile of Sam Altman and like his family compares him to a robot. So like that's kind of weird really? too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like that's it, the whole set. Uh, Sam Altman's a really interesting guy. Yeah, he but, is. I did the whole pod with uh, Joe Rogan, oh, which was yeah. quite lengthy. And you get I didn't to know, know he a lot did about what was him. that. Okay. I didn't know yeah, that yeah, either. Yeah. yeah I just Rogan. read his, in, I think it was a New Yorker did a profile on him, but I, I love reading like profiles. But anyway, so I thought, yeah, like a lot of these dudes are, I think you have to be kind of quirky to sometimes see yep. things in a way that gets us innovation. But yeah, we'll have and to wait and see on that. I thought that was interesting. No, or Alpha, you bring a really good book. Sharif, free speech ain't crazy. You're bang on, dude. And that's not what I'm trying to say at all. But when you have a responsibility to your shareholders, all of a sudden free speech sometimes ain't so free. And that's just the reality in which we live. It ain't my rules. It ain't anybody else on this uh, panel's rules. It's just what people... Uh, you know, it's just what society does. I mean, and shareholders are going to be calling you up, being like, yo, cool it. My stocks, my money, right? But I get what you're saying, man. Absolutely free speech is what it is. Now, there are limitations on that. Funding secured, you can't say that, okay? And we all know about that little thing with the Saudis, this, that, and the other. With Tesla, there are things you cannot say. You can't go into a crowded theater and yell fire. That ain't protected. You know that. I don't have to give you guys a lesson on free speech. But, um, ah. <laughs> Neil, this market's on fire. No, it isn't. Not yet, anyway. Not I enjoyed right. you saying that, Neil. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty good, Neil. It's pretty good, Neil. Um, uh, Sky Bear, Sharif, Adara, what is going on with Up? Let's see what's up? up with Up. Yeah. Um, wheels Up experience. Um... Oh, okay, well, up is certainly down. Wheels down, indeed. Um, yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's a downward trend. We fell hard with a viciousness, with a vengeance. Um, the wheels up experience is currently um, to the downside, I'd have to say. Not seeing any news on this one as of right now, but let's look at the daily. Because no, yesterday this one was really strong. This one did have a bit of a run up right. to the upside. This daily is not, look at this daily chart. Look at this cap. Yeah, that's a small cap gapper. That's the life of a small cap. Yeah, that's they true. They have like the that. giant candles to the yeah. downside. Because look, this is not the first time it ran. And look, the, yeah. the red candle eclipsed the green candle and to like the upside. They do nothing for days and days and yeah, days and days. Yeah, they just languish. Yeah. And then yeah. they swoop up and they languish again. Also, look at this crazy like bottom area here. I'm going to draw it as best I can. We know I'm not great at drawing these. Slightly higher lows, but more or less kind of flat around this 120 area so i think this is a really interesting bottom for up when we're looking for resistance if it kinds to fall down from this move we had to the upside i think this is a really interesting look um and i think also we are seeing kind of higher highs but i think we need to see a bit of a clear trend on the daily you're right though as sharif said so astutely this is the life of a small cap gapper and that <laughs> life is often short and sad and, um, and kind of punctuated by big moves yes Remarkable. yes exactly yeah it, it, like that's the, the way it lives yeah it it, it's, 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 like it's got, it's, it's like, you know, that party rock and roll lifestyle over here <laughs> for these small cappers. They have their days in the sun. Let's look at Sing as well. Sing with a C. Because oh, that yeah. was, I know, moving as that. well. Because let's look at small caps. Um, what? Oh, he, he's falling a little bit here. It looks like Sing is a little off key right now. Oh. Um, lower highs, lower highs. Sort of finding a bit of a consolidative bottom here, this 8.5 range. H.C. Wainwright yesterday raised this guy's price target to $13. It also had another um, biotech-related catalyst. Um, 
with regards to, I think, uh, medical delivery system with Singh. I'm going to pull up that. I will not Wasn't be able it to ADHD, say. ADHD, something like that? I or thought, was that that the different one? Oh, I think, yeah, I think this might be ADHD. Um, sure. and it has oh, a, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I yeah, think I saw yeah. a different catalyst in this one. I'm thinking of a different small cat, maybe. Um, but this one, yeah, you are right. This is, it's looking to submit the NDA for its, um, its ADHD drug for right. 2025. Yeah. Yeah, no shortage of those needed anyway. Um, Not at all. Uh, yeah, got to tell you. The, the daily on Singh looks great, though. Oh, my gosh. This guy was just chilling out in, in dead zone, dead yeah. spill over here for quite a while. Oh, it moves. And then flew. I don't even really have levels to look back on this one. This is the, We hit 16. I just hit my hand there. That's crazy. But, yeah, this is a really, a really wild look. Um, I am seeing, at least shorter term, lower, higher lows, higher highs. Is the sky the limit for Sing? We'll have to find out what tune it will be singing. Yeah, like that's the thing with these biotech stocks at era. They could do nothing, and then you could get into them, and you could almost go to zero. Or if it hits, like they actually get approval for their drug, or it's a successful phase three, you could go like 100x, 1,000x. That's true, yeah. It's just nuts with these biotech stocks. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of risk in them, so you need to really be aware of that. All right, guys, let's have a look here at some big cap names. What's doing best on the day? A lot of people were telling me to look at Amazon. Let's look at AMZN. It's up marginally, 0.5%, not doing much. What I do like about AMZN right now, I don't like the fact that for a long because it was it gapped below the, um, the uh, pivot point. It, but what I do like about it is we got this higher low. Okay, so it looks like buyers incrementally buying this bad boy up off that 153 level. We still have to get above the pivot point and essentially above this 153.90, almost literally 154 area to really get going here. So I, I know personally, if you're looking long, you get long in around here, you put your stop just below this lower low. If you're looking short, you get short now and you put your stop above this area over here, this consolidation area around 153.60, 153.55 AMZN. Very, very subdued price action wise on the day. Uh, not the one I'm really looking for here. Uh, let's look at AAPL um, because I don't know what the hell was up with this candle here at 12.05, but this is quite bearish. This is, uh, you know, uh, what do they call this? Uh, some star, something like that? I forgot, not a doge. I forget the name of this candle over here. I haven't looked at uh, candlestick patterns in a while. But anyway, this is a bearish candle. Uh, you get that big move up uh, into that 145, 194.45, pardon me, and then immediately right back down. The only thing that's really kind of good about it is we're putting in higher lows again, and we just a little bit above view up. But to get the trend going, we got to break through this 194 and a half on AAPL. Obviously, moving up today on the news that they won their appeal, able to sell their Apple Watch 9 and the Ultra 2. We'll have to wait and see what Apple does. TSLA, the subject of conversation between the Katina Man and Chef Wonderful today, finding re, uh, support, I should say, at S1, so the first support level here at 258.30, which is a low day, is holding, but there's really nothing to be positive about on Tesla to the long side today. I'd say we really need to get above this 261 area. Look at this consolidation area over here. This is likely to act as resistance when we get back up there, at least initially. This 260 and a half, 260, uh, you know, and two thirds area, this general area, if we start curling back up, and start moving back up. Look for likely resistance right here. They tend to flip support and resistance when I see these type of patterns. If we even start curling back up on TSLA to retake 260, we're gonna have to watch uh, how that does on the day. So Tesla, interesting. Uh, you saw the Katina Man all over Softy this morning. Uh, it's doing another, you know, similar pattern that we just saw on Amazon and on Apple, higher lows, uh, but really not taking out that 376-ish area. Let's say that that's going to be the resistance area on Softy. We're still at 375 and a third, but I do like the higher low pattern. We're above VWAP right now. Let's see what we get on Mr. Softy on the day, but just... Trying to be patient here, I guess. Uh, with respect to the futures trades that I'm in at the moment, still, I got a beak wetter here at the 25 area. Didn't get filled. We got awfully close. We got to 24 and three quarters, I think. We're not making any lower lows. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be as patient as I can. What I do like about this little pattern over here is that 
higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low with this flat top-ish area at the quarter, 17, one and a quarter area. So if we get the breakout, you know, I want to wet my beak there and then we'll be looking at possibly 32 or 33 to take some at view up. But this, anything could happen here right now on the future. So back in my patience and uh, seeing what could happen. Up candle, what was the setup on the future? The future was a double bottom and the holding of 17.1 and of these pivot points. So this is the NQ over here. I should probably put uh, ES over here so you guys could tell that the one on the right is the ES. This is the NQ. So this is what I was looking at uh, up candle. Double bottom at 17.1. 17.1 holds and we start putting in higher highs, but we are below that VWAP area. We're not able to reclaim VWAP. So that's what I was trying to basically, let's just say, calculated gamble on. Um, getting in near the low end, the mid area of the consolidation. If it breaks down, my stop will be at that 17,103. But ideally, I'm trying to work off this double bottom pattern um, and the holding of 17,1 and the pivot point, possibly moving up into R1 over here, which it did earlier on, and then rejected off R1. R1 is a teal dotted line on my chart. So that's the setup there. Um, it's more than one to, uh, one to one. It's probably a two to one if I'm able to wet my beak at this R1 over here. So we're going to have to wait and see how that happens. Morning star. Thank you, Pitch Bull. Yes, I always forget the evening star, morning star, upside down hammer, gravestone doji. I love how there's so many names to this. I don't even know which one is right. And um, I'm the one on the show. I forget these candle chart pa candlestick patterns, uh, guys. So uh, you have to excuse my ignorance on this one. Just Brad 5 or V, I don't know what that is. What do you think about Mint? It has a very interesting daily chart. Let's have a look at M-I-N-T for uh, Just Brad. Bring in that bad boy over here. Go to the daily movers, type in M-I-N-T on this bad boy. And uh, okay, so we wanna look at the daily. What in the hell? Is this for real? What is this? I've never seen anything like this in it's my like life. like a perfect. No, this has got to be something. Oh, all right. What is this? The fund seeks maximum current income consistent with preservation of capital and daily liquidity. The fund seeks to achieve its investment objective by investing at least 80% of its net assets in a diversified portfolio of fixed income instruments of varying maturities, which may be represented by forwards. I have no idea what the hell it is. Uh, PIMCO enhanced short Mature it? I don't know what this is, man. I really need to uh, apprise myself. But this is a very, very unusual chart pattern. And I'm sure anybody who's looked at chart patterns in the past knows that this type of symmetry is not normal in the wild. Okay? It's just like when you're in a forest and you see symmetry, like legitimate symmetry, symmetry doesn't typically happen in nature like that. Um, and then that's how you know something is man-made. This looks awfully weird. I need to look more into this. I'm not going to have a, an answer for you here, just Brad, because I don't know what the hell this is, but this is very, very unusual. Yeah, it's like the Uncanny Valley. Neil, have you seen anything like this? Sorry to interrupt you. Sorry, sorry. Look at that. What is that? Yeah. M-I-N-T, Neil. Mint. Uh, it's a fund. It looks like an electrocardiogram, the Chilean nightmare says. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I don't know what this is. It's a short, yeah, it is. It's an enhanced short. I have no idea. All right, there's so many instruments out there. Look, uh, just Brad, I'm, I'm not going to comment on it now because there's just, if I am to comment on it, obviously it's bullish. It's higher lows and higher highs, but this looks awfully weird to me. Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Nick Dub, don't miss this arm move. Arm. Four and three quarter percent here for ARM. It is headed up again um, on arm. Shout out to, to Big Nick Dub for letting me know. Look at this. We are, this oh has God. been one hell of a chart for arm. People were talking about this being a failed IPO. Nah, uh, uh. This, is, this company is, is getting it done. Uh, let's have a look at the five minute chart. Beautiful bull flag here forming on the five, uh, holding that $77 area quite well. All the dips into 77 have been bought up, and lo and behold, we find ourselves knocking on the door of 78 again at there, 77 and three quarters at the moment. I like this arm look. I'm just asking myself, have I missed the move here on arm? Is there more to go? Um, there could be. 
Uh, I just feel like, you know, the, the, the meat of the move is uh, behind us at this moment. But if it does come into 77, I'll definitely be interested in a possible dip trade. Looks like it's holding this 20 period like glue. This is the 20 EMA, the yellow one is what I'm talking about here, holding it quite well. Initially holding the 10, then breaking down, holding the 20. And we are at this, uh, you know, it's a local resistance level at 77 and a quarter. We had an initial rejection at 77 and a quarter back at 11 o'clock. Let's see if we can break above it and close above it this time. Obviously, these two wicks exceed that 77 and a quarter, taking us over 78 for the high of day of 78.16. But this one's putting in higher lows and higher highs. It is a possible good look here on ARM. Shout out to Nick Dubb. But I did see that, actually. AMD also a good looker as well. Um, moving down here, Sam looks like one of those cash distribution ETFs. Yes, Leo says looks manipulated. I, I wouldn't, you know, make that statement quite yet. I'd, I'd want to know a little bit more about it. But yeah, that is a, it's an interesting look on that one. I'm definitely putting that for, uh, for more, uh, for more uh, research later. John, uh, arm squeeze very likely due in part to analyst $110 price target. Did I? Was arm upgraded today? So it must have been a previous upgrade because I, I don't see ARM on my upgrades and downgrades list here, uh, although it is really light today, as uh, Adara knows, because I've always been trying to get her to have some some stuff to talk about. And this week, it's been been really light. You know that. Yeah, no, um, I mean, Sharif has been trying. He's like, oh, I'm looking at the thing. Oh, like, we found, you know, found a downgrade today, and that was yeah. a very big day. But yeah, no, so actually, <laughs> ARM was, because I was going to say, I thought I saw it on uh, the upgrades and downgrades this week. Mm. You had it on Tuesday. Gotcha. It was an upgrade on Tuesday. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, you know, I don't even know how to transition to this. I am terrified. I got into a Mara short and I'm scared. But why I like this short, look at this level. This level has been crazy in terms of like support. And I, you know, support becoming resistance is a thing. I do not have many shares here at all. Um, if we break above like VWAP, because I'm not, VWAP is not always level, but Mara, Mara has been dancing around VWAP all day. If there was a day to short Mara, I think today is the day to short Mara. We are down 7%. The trend tells me that we are headed to the downside. So I would like to listen to the trend, you know, when possible. Um, we're out about seven cents right now. So not a great look for me personally, but I have to say, I really do like this whole, um, this kind of resistance turning into support thing that we do have. What makes me worried is this might be a reversal. We're headed to the high side, but I'm, I'm not gonna dwell on that. All I can do is trade the action I see, right? I can't make assumptions. You know what I mean? Also, thank you, Bears versus Bulls in the chat. Let's go, Adara. Hope so. Well, hopefully, we, we run down and not run up because I do not trust Mara. Mara will do what Mara does. Mm. Um, and, uh, ooh, um, Matt's real cat. I love that chat name. Tesla Dumper. Yeah, Tesla, um, I should not have gotten out of that short. I stepped away from the, my desk for a second, which is why I didn't want to like leave the short hanging, especially with Tesla doing Tesla things. Um, but, yeah, so I did get out. I bought like 25 cents in the money, unfortunately. And then I'm still at the sim also. And then we fell to the downside um, with the viciousness quite aggressively here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it'd be interesting to see if we make a lower low. If we make a lower low, I would probably get back in the short. I'm just trying to scalp these things you know, for quick movements, which unfortunately has not been working out so far today. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see what uh, how Stressla ends up treating us. Because this is um, not a bad look. What I noticed, though, also part of why I got out of the short, Tesla seems to be really strong. We'll fall down and we'll pick right up about two, around 258.85 for whatever reason. Just Dang. watching the tape. Because when I scalpulate, I like to do some tape watching, too, to see where we're moving, what kind of resistance I'm seeing. Thank you, Sharif. I like that. Um, that I'm scalpulating, I'm tape watching. Yeah, I, ta I watch the tape I like while it. I scalpulate. Oh, that kind of rhymes. Like but 258.85 uh, has been, weirdly, a really key area for Tesla, I noticed that's where we started to get a little bit of support. We run up. So watching this, I, I, you know, I want to see us decisively break below that 258.85 because I've not seen that yet, and that's what I need to see. You know, waving the old man fingers over here <laughs> to see where we do there. Also, some mentions of coin in the chat, and as someone who is unfortunately in Mara, not unfortunately, I'm being maybe I'm being too down on myself. I'm a little scared of this trade, but yeah, cool. Okay, coin. Wow, this is a very different look from Mara. We, um, huh. this, yeah, I mean, all I have to say is higher lows, higher highs. 
Coin, much like all these crypto names, has been having itself a day, slash week, slash month, slash year. But Coin, I was reading somewhere, this was on CNBC, mm. that apparently, so Affirm is the top of, of the tech stocks that are above 5 billion valuations or market caps. Um, Affirm was the number one percentage mover up 430%. Coinbase was the number two percentage mover for mega what a monster. Uh, tech names above $5 billion in market cap. So I thought I worded that stat really poorly, but it's on CNBC. Um, I saw that this morning. Coinbase is a monster, as Sharif said, put it very well there. Let's look at the daily on Coinbase. Um, but yeah, not really helping with Mara, just because it's moving very differently from Mara, but I thought it might be nice food for thought. Um, yeah, Coinbase on the daily, what is there to say but wow. Like, this is a great look. We got to add a couple um, areas of consolidation, move back to the upside, fell down. But also note that we are still making, we were making um, high, like, we're making lower lows. We consolidated a little bit this flat channel from August to October. And then with the rest of the stocks, the second November hit, Coinbase went running to the upside. I was talking about this yesterday. We went up like $100 in almost two months. So that's crazy. Um, Coinbase intraday, though, seems like we are kind of, I, I just want to see us decisively break above this 185.50, um, 186 different? area. It is being distinctly different from Mara. I would say shout out to Obi. Who, oh, is no Obi idea. here? Yeah, he's right there. I love him. He has no idea. We're talking. I love that. I find myself saying distinctly different to myself. Yeah, it's 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 a nice Fantastic. little. It's a fun little saying. It's a good Fantastic. time. But yeah. So um, also Bill is howling wolf, wolf, wolf in the chat. So let's look at wolf. Um, see if it's worth all the, the fuss. I did actually see a story on Wolf today, so I'm going to pull that up. Um, I don't, I think this is a crypto related name, I would like to say. Um, I am right. Okay. So Wolf was, um, where was the story on Terra Wolf? I thought I saw something. Maybe I am. Um... Oh, yeah. So they, they provided a business update, fully funded, um, 7.9x has per second, um, increasing self mining capacity by 58%. Not a bad stat at all. Uh, building three at the Lake Mariner facility now fully operational. So I guess just a lot about this facility. Um, Wolf, oh, Tony Price saying, who is crying wolf in the chat? Ah, wow. Yeah, I mean, That's I wouldn't right be crying if I was in wolf right now because <laughs> this is a pretty good look. What does make me nervous is it looks like we might be getting a slightly lower high here. Because we had 312. Now we're at about, you know, 310. So very, very slight lower high, but I would just keep an eye on continuing to make higher highs because it does seem like we have seen slightly lower highs if I were to, to draw this, and I will, because that's what we're here to do. Lower highs, that's the one thing that makes me nervous, but overall, it seems like we're rebounding pretty well here off Wolf. A um, lot to howl about over here. Uh, Bob, Bob's my uncle. I'm not going to get into that whole thing, but Bob's my uncle. If you trade a certain amount, my man, on the platform, they waive the fees for you. So um, just check to see how much they are uh, requiring you to trade and to generate commissions for them to waive fees. That's the rule in Canada. Bob knows what I'm talking about. All right, guys, I wanted to mention here the future because I'm involved in this trade. How many times are we going to reject, on, reject off VWAP on the NQ March contract? Once, twice, OB thrice, four, five, six, seven, and eight, the eighth one manifesting at the moment. So a lot of resistance here at VWAP, and it's from the south side of VWAP. So it makes me a little bit concerned. The other side to that coin is you should be bullish. Why? Because we're getting in higher lows with a flat top. So I don't know what to think here. And uh, I think the more thinking I do, probably the more I'm going to psych myself out. So the stop is going to stay in place and the price, to, uh, the, the beak wetter, my first uh, resting profit taker is going to stay in place. Whichever one triggers first is going to be, uh, you know, either the continuation or the end of the trade in the case of the stop loss. So what I'm seeing here on the future, higher lows with this obvious flat top here at VWAP, VWAP being the solid white line on my chart. I'd like to get up to at least into 25 to uh, de-risk a little bit. That is my first beak wetter. But yeah, we're having an awful lot of trouble breaking through the volume weighted average price on the NQ. And one thing I just noticed on my specific platform is if I exclude pre-market action, okay, my VWAP is entirely different than when I included. That's just specific to my platform. I don't want to say that that's a hard and fast rule for all of them, but 
on this particular chart, the one that we're looking at, this excludes all pre-market and after-market action from yesterday and today so that I can see the real gap up, okay? And this dotted line over here, that separates the days. And that's why you'll see the pivot point on this chart end at this particular area because that's when today starts. So very interesting, I didn't actually know that, that if I excluded pre-market action on this platform, that it would give me a different volume weighted average price. I wonder really if, that, uh, if I've been kind of using the, the wrong data all this time with VWAP. So we'll have to wait and see. I'm gonna leave the, this as it is and always compare it to my side chart, which includes pre-market action. Uh, yes, uh, uh, LC Trader is based on volume traded, so it should be different. I realize that. I just figured the platform would include the pre-market trading action in its assessment of VWAP, despite the fact that I chose to exclude it from the chart. I didn't realize that the platform was gonna do all that for me, but that it's, it's good, it's good. It's nice to have both, anyway. Uh, Boeing reversed to the upside, says Nima. Before I tell you about Boeing, I want to tell you quickly here about uh, Sidhu, because Sidhu started pumping back up into that $14 area and then rejected again, was well over 200% the volume, flying on this one now, nine and three quarter million shares. Guys, about a million shares done in the past five minutes as it starts to really move up again. The reason why this is only at around 10 million shares because it halted to no end initially on the way up and then on the way back down. Obviously, when you're halted, you're not trading and the shares are not changing hands. Therefore, volume is a little bit lower, but that is the look there. I think we just got a fill on the Fuge. Yes, we did. So we're one fill here on the Fuge as we break into that VWAP area. Here we go. Uh, okay. Here we go. Uh, yeah, I can't not help myself every time I say here we go. I have to do that. Um, but there we go. Just a perfunctory break of VWAP. Nothing to write home about, but the higher lows are, are still intact, and we're looking for that decided flat top break. Doesn't look like it's going to come in quite yet. This looks like an algo-driven push down. I mean, uh, the, the algos may be kind of keeping this within a range. Who knows? I'm not going to speculate. Just trade the price action. One beak wetter. Um, there, we'll see if we get the next. Mullen, we talked a bit, a bit about this. Bit of a double top here at 14 and three quarters, taking us south of VWAP, hold 13. Now we're above VWAP again, knocking on the door of that $14. Uh, looks like support here, the, the, the low end of the consolidation area that we had, acting as resistance at the moment, not an exact science, but you know, close, close. The, the flipping of support and resistance over here. So keeping my eye on MULN, let's have a look at Boeing, because we told Nemo we'd look at Boeing. So let's go to this Apple screen. We're not trading Apple today. BA, which trades on the New York, here we go. Boeing, what's Boeing up to? I know Adair looked at this earlier. We still south of VWAP on BA, but nice off that, uh, that bounce off that 257 and three quarters. Now knocking on the door of that 259 and a half. Still down, excuse me, 1%. Um, let's uh, bring in a different chart because I want to want to look at this a little bit more thoroughly. Oh, this computer today, choppy. BA. This is the five minute look on Boeing. Now, I know that we've been really aggressively to the high side as of late, but let's try to find an interesting area of support or resistance here. Let's go to the 15. Did we break down between all recent support? Yeah, we did, in fact. Okay, so this area here, we haven't been at that 257 and a half area since December 15th. Okay, so it's like a couple of week low at this point. Now, where do we encounter resistance if we were to make it back up? Well, we have VWAP. We know that VWAP's hanging around that 259 and a half area, but what's the price action tell us? What was the low? of the, the last day we were at this level. Well, we gotta go back to the December 22nd, lo and behold, it's that 259 and a half, right? Where we found a lot of our support at that area. So we could be possibly rejecting off this level. We got VWAP there in our way. We have the low end of the December 27 price action right at that 259 and a half area. So I'd like Boeing to kind of break and hold above that area to kind of show me that, mm, you know, that's not an important level for me anymore. I'm clearing them. So good luck on Boeing. A bit of a V-shaped recovery here on the 15, but still below VWAP and coming into the uh, 20 seconds price action today.
Yeah, that's an interesting look there for Boeing. Um, definitely an interesting one. It's been like a beast lately on the day. So I think mm. the fact that we're finding that consolidation is interesting. Someone in the chat was mentioning um, Iova, Iovance, um, DT Research here. Iovance, yeah, I believe, yeah, this one okay. I did mention. Uh, pump it, indeed. I mentioned this one on the um, small cap recap, I do believe, today. Um, was there news on this one? Maybe a look? Yeah, I'm just... IOVA? No. Yeah. Sure. Oh, we had um, a price... Oh, yeah, okay, so there was uh, news on this one. So yeah. yesterday. So uh, there was a um, FDA slapping the clinical hold on IOVANCE's lung cancer study because a patient died. So that was pretty big. Uh, That's monstrous. Yeah. you got to be really careful with that. Holy crap. Yeah. Damn. Oh, yeah. Go on, go on. Sorry. So, um, so yeah, that is the, you know, I feel it's weird to say, but that was the catalyst for this one to the downside mm -hmm. yesterday. That's very, oh, the chart died. Yeah, that'll, that'll get them canceling that study real quick. Yeah. Did they cancel the study um, after the death? Hold. hold. Yeah, Got pause. It, okay. Yeah. Pause, okay. Clinical hold, that's what they call yeah, it. Yeah, the least they can do, I guess. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I think, like, I think a pause is a little small but um you know it is what it is and the daily here on this is i mean you can see like that giant sell-off we had yesterday obviously understandably oh makes sense yeah off that sure. news yeah. but i mean other than that honestly for a little small cap runner iova has not been doing that badly i have to say like we did have lower lows here but we did kind of break out of the channel and then we kind of flew off of that double top i guess triple top now area this 9.2 9.4 uh, we'll have to see if we can make it today. I do think that catalyst is definitely something that would understandably be hanging over it there. But, um, yeah, I think still, like, clearly strong on the day. I would guess then, because we don't have, I'm not seeing any catalyst specifically for today. I'm guessing this is a rebound off of what happened, um, uh, off of what we had yesterday, that, that big news. But, I mean, today Iowa looks pretty strong on the day, these higher lows. Higher highs, um, very much an upward channel movement type here. Also, um, shocking. No, I'm joking. It's not shocking. I got out of the Mara short. Mara decided to not want me there, and I listened to Mara because the stock is right. Um, yeah, and I, while well, I was shorting this, like we were down when I got in about 7% on the day. We did have lower highs. We had lower lows. Arguably, if I wanted to short this, I got in way too early. I thought we were, I was watching the tape and I was looking at this area of resistance or support becoming resistance and I thought this would be an interesting area to enter. Um, unfortunately, it did not work out, but I got out before I could be too sad about it. I'm going to have to see what we do at this um, 2930 here because my tape watching is telling me that we're seeing a little bit of resistance. Bang, but my tape, tape watching locking. also told me to get in way too early on this short the first time. So we're going to be patient, watching the tape, watching the chart, watching these lower highs. Mara is still down on the day, but I know Mara doesn't care about rules or feelings. So um, the stock has been monstrous, so I'm going to keep watch here. Ben saying that they're long Mara, probably a fair, a very fair assumption, at least right now, if you got off this 2760, that's a 70 cent move there. I wonder what the NOS boss is doing on this swing. Trip. Oh yeah. Is he, is he taking, is he wetting his beak a couple of times or what's he doing over there? Is he still holding? Some uh, good beak wetting opportunities. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You could, geez, Louise, you could have umpteen amount of beak wetting opportunities there. Uh, by beak wetting guys, we're talking about profit taking. It's a little joke that we say around here. Uh, guys, S I D U SIDU 238% just broke through 15, 1506 high. This one is really going. The small caps have been in vogue this week and the, the week prior. New high of day, 1538 now as it continues to pump. It's very dangerous. I'm not trading it. The spread is ridiculous on this name. The volatility is ridiculous. Um, you know, I just, I'd rather uh, suffer from FOMO rather than get into this bad boy. Here comes 250%. We're awfully close to it, uh, above this $15 level. Looks like 15 is being defended here. Buyers stepping in at that level. It's not breaking 15 on the, on the bid, at least for now. Lots of orange just came in on there on the tape. That means over the ask, means a lot of buyer exuberance. We still have that 1538 high. There we go, breaking down below 15, but for how long? 15 here on the ask. Let me look at uh, SIDU's daily chart because we need to know what the levels of resistance and support are, at least on the daily time frame. I know Adara had a, a quick look at this, but it pays to, uh, to have a, you know another look. Did you look at uh, 
SID used daily? You, I don't um, know. I did. don't know if I did. I think I oh, good. It was all, I think I mentioned it in the big desk, but I don't know if I sure. looked at the daily. Well, let's go look at the daily here. Yeah, you know, typical of the small cap gapper is a chart that looks similar to this. It's going to freeze on me. Oh, okay, good. I, um, yeah, you know how these ones are, right? They have their days. I think Adara was showing you, like, this is how a small cap lives our life, right? Uh, these outlying days, huge wicks, um, you know, with small bodies. I'm talking about this over here. Um, now, what's the local resistance level? That's what I want to know. Not what the resistance level was in 2021. That doesn't interest me. Well, we broke above this resistance point here made in early November. That was around 14 and a half. That's come and gone because we made a 1540 high. So I'm going to go ahead and say that it's this crest over here that we made in mid-September, Adara. And this got us into 20 bucks, the high being 20 bucks. But the closing prints are all around that 18 and change. Let's just say for the sake of safety here, 20 bucks resistance. So I'm going to expect there to be a wall of sellers likely at 20 bucks if we should make it up there. The next level being um, obviously this peak over here at 25, that takes us back into late August. So SIDU, you know, headed in the right direction of outlying day. This one just also had a reverse split or sorry, a split of one to 100. So it looks like they were living their life in penny land there with two penny spread, uh, sorry, two penny price. And they did a 100 uh, to one, one to 100 reverse split to, so they can get back into the NASDAQ's compliance and, and their good books. Breaking down now below 14. So this one just made a 1540 high. And as quick as we made that, as quick as now we are below 14. So the bamboozlement, it's real, it's fast, it's furious. Be careful on these small cap gappers. What was the float? It was like 600,000 or something like that. 764,000 shares is the float on Sidhu. Be careful. All right, we did get that beak wetter through the break of VWAP on the Fuge. So we did get that 17.130 touch. Oops. So now, um, you know, what I'll be focused on the most is can we hold VWAP now? We got the break of VWAP. We kept rejecting off VWAP. We counted about eight times all these wicks rejecting off it. We finally break it now. Now do we hold it as a level of support or are we just going to be a quick perfunctory break of VWAP and then we'll start trending back down? Time will tell. Let's see if we hold this 17 one and a quarter area. That's what I'll be gunning for with the ultimate little touch there at R1, resistance one, the teal line on my chart at 17.145 Adair. Yeah, I was saying it yesterday too, and it's really cool how a lot of these pivot points are actually respected by these stocks. It's not always going to be I love case, it. much like VWAP, much like MAs, but it gives you something to look at. It gives it you does. another thing to like be like, this is what's going on. It this does. is another potential area of resistance and support. And who can say no to areas of resistance and support? I don't know, not me. I'm but, good um, with it. But yeah, I will. I have Nike pulled up here for C row in the chat. Um, Nike is an interesting one because we do kind of. We're definitely to the upside on the day. And I think, I believe Sean or Neil mentioned Nike earlier, I want to say. It looks like we're slightly breaking out of this upward channel, but what an upward channel it is. And the reason I say slightly breaking out is because look at this here. We did have a slightly lower high. It looks like we could be making a lower low. I'm going to keep an eye on this. I do not dislike the look of this. Also, if it holds up, this could be a decent range play. Just like scalping this from 108.30 to 108.60. I know it's small potatoes, but like I said, I feel like I'm trying to get back into more the scalping because you have to kind of like become comfortable with what you like doing as a trader, right? And I, I mean, I'm still learning. I am in the sim, but I think for myself, the big kind of trading I've been doing my learning, I find I've been the happiest when I'm scalping. So I'm trying to get scalpier, trying to get back into that. Also, that level I called out Mara, that um, 2930, 2935 might actually be a thing. So it takes me a moment here just when the chart gets pulled back up. Uh, but look at this. Look where we're kind of failing. This is not 2930. I might have to get back in on the short with smaller share size. Because Video. look what you're seeing. Lower highs, lower highs, lower highs. NVIDIA apparently. It's um, pumping. Oh, it's, uh, pumping. it's knocking on the door of 500 here. Oh uh, this God. is, yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're a dollar away from 500 on NVIDIA. And we were just at 495 uh, when we, uh, like about 20 minutes ago. This is how NVIDIA is rocketing up off that 495 and a half. Now we're at 499 almost, 498.84. 
Uh, we just made a higher high here on NVDA. It's up almost 1% now, not quite 0.91, but NVIDIA breaking through R1 here on the, um, on the chart. So resistance one for pivot points, holding the pivot point all morning. Look how many wicks off the pivot point, which also happened to be yesterday's closing price. That 494.20 essentially was the closing price. So it's nice when those two inflate. But anyway, 498.84 breaking through this previous high here at 498 and a half. So Nvidia making higher lows and higher highs. So that's three higher highs now for Nvidia. This is the IB high. This is the uh, 1045, 11-ish high. And now this is the current price action. Higher low, higher low and then higher highs over here. Good look for NVDA as it knocks on the door of 500. Again, 499 though, still a level that we gotta break through the whole dollar level. Let's not disrespect that. Quickly, I saw the Katina man sit down and then he's like, Microsoft, LOL. Microsoft is actually moving back up into that 375.80 in exactly the way that Apple's breaking down. Look at this up into the right pattern here on Softy, and then look at Apple breaking down below VWAP now, making lower lows and lower highs. So the Apple and Microsoft switching spots for whatever reason, even though Apple started strong on the day, well above that pivot point and uh, gapping up, in fact, like the closing price yesterday at, um, where was this? This is, yeah, this is the closing price yesterday at like 193, uh, what was that, 2016. And the first print today we got at 4 a.m. Uh, was essentially like 193.50, so well above that area on AAPL, but moving back down now. Now that probably won't bode well for the future trade that I'm in. I don't necessarily want Apple trending down while I'm in a futures position, because Apple is the largest component, whether in the S&P or the NASDAQ. And you need Apple to go if you want this. Well, not, it's not a hard and fast rule, but definitely makes things life a lot easier if Apple is going in the direction of the future. So keeping my eye on that. But NVIDIA is one of those ones I'm really keeping my eye on now because it is awfully strong. And chips are strong. Yeah. You have AMD up two and three quarters. ARM, four and three quarters. Uh, Intel and Micron taking a bit of a day off. Intel's been a rocket chip, so, you know, they're... they're not up on the day. Intel and Micron both down half a percent. But yeah, I mean, it's not a bad look today for the micros or the semis or whatever you want to call them. Uh, good look there. I don't really see much else. What's the chat chatting about here? Cheeky tax. Okay, that makes sense. So him and I were going back and forth with respect, with respect to my VWAP line, just explaining that to him. Big Nimit, OCA, OCEA making moves. Any news? First of all, let me look to see if, it's make, if it has any news. O Ocean Biomedical. Do we have anything for this bad boy? I don't have anything, but wow, that's a move. 51 some odd percent. So we need to look at this, okay. It is a penny stock, so OCEA, sub $1, but for how long? Look at that rocket chip right up into 91 pennies. We start our life today at 60 pennies. So we've moved up big boy 30 pennies already on the day, 31 pennies. Here we go, 91 back in play. Do we see a dollar, new high a day as we're talking right now on OCEA. I don't have a catalyst for it. Adara, is uh, there anything on Benzinga for OCEA? I'm looking on Benzinga. Yeah, shout out to them. Shout out to them. 95 Nothing pennies now, Adara. Nothing, okay. Sorry. Two days in a row though, Adara, because we moved up big boy yesterday off that uh, 60 penny area. We got into... 86 pennies. Today we open up our life at 74, 77 pennies, and then we're talking 94. So OCEA two days in a row. Do I have anything for it yesterday? No, I don't. I have no entries on the 30th. So I have no idea why this is moving up, but it is breaking through key technical levels here. There's no question about that. But the major technical level I'm going to suggest to you is that break and hold above $1. Can it do that? We'll have to wait and see. It's about five pennies away. Yeah, um, so the Mara Future short is it. going splendidly. I am pleased as punch. I was watching those levels. We, I saw confirmation of that lower high, um, watching the tape, scalpulating, and guess what? Mara said au revoir, and I am um, all smiles. Um, because I did try to get in the short way too early, earlier today, I, I will fully admit to that. Here I did not get top wick, but I got pretty darn close and I am not going to complain. We got around like 22, 29, 22. I think I probably could have gotten like, I think highest probably around like this 29, 
30, 29, 40. Um, but yeah, not going to complain. Very happy with how this trade went. Um, patience is is the key here. Um, I'm not, yeah, people, some would say it's not going to last too long. I highly doubt it. I know I'm, I like scalping anyway. Even if I take some profit out at 29, I'm not going to complain. Is Maybe Nostradamus we say, in the chat? I'm kidding. You get oh. Because Nostradamus can see the future. Oh, right. That's true, too. Come on, Adara. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm really tired. <laughs> that's I'm just a, teasing That's you. a fair point. Though. I appreciate it. Yeah, because you're right, because yeah. no one can see the future. No. All we know is how it's going to go. And I mean, also... Uh, no, thank you. I, yeah, I appreciate that. That's, that's pretty good. I'm just I'm embarrassed how long it took you to catch <laughs> that's that. That's all good. But look at this, too. You're you know, like, do we know a user called Nostradamus? I was like, <laughs> then I was thinking the Nas album, Nostradamus. Ah, and then I, gotcha. I was like, I wish Nas was in the chat always. <laughs> but um, but look at this. Like, We can't see the future, but what we can do is look at chart patterns and what they usually dictate, eh. right? What we have here are lower highs and lower lows. So all that tells me is, it doesn't tell me for sure what's going to happen, but it does tell me there is a chance that Mark could continue to press lower. So I'm going to look at that. You know what I mean? I, I, you're right, though. There is Nostradamus is not in the chat, unfortunately. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Sharif. I think I needed to hear All that. Oh, good. But yeah, um, in the sim, just a reminder here, as always, really happy to be learning here, um, liking how the short is going thus far. Going to keep an eye on it. Going to keep monitoring it. But yeah, the more I see these lower highs, the more I see these lower lows, the more kind of confident I am in how this trade um, is going thus far. Uh, Dara, I just wanted to update our viewers Please because do. it's yeah. time sensitive. Uh, we have a seven year note auction in exactly eight minutes. We saw what the five year did yesterday. It pumped to the high side, baby. Uh, Microsoft is pumping, the Katina man's pumped. He's sitting back down. Oh, he was doing that for the auction. All right, all right. I thought you were still involved in the softy long because softy's at almost high a day now, pumping back up. The Katina man is $1.60 in the money on the softy long. A softy looking real good right now, Katina Man, up half a point, uh, looking a lot better than Apple. High, it's, it's an upward channel. It's all higher highs and higher lows here since around 10 o'clock. But with respect to the seven-year note auction, previous print, 4.399. So essentially almost a 4.4 uh, figure there. What we saw yesterday was a 60 basis point difference on the five-year auction between the previous print and what we got yesterday. If yesterday is any indication, you know, given that they are very similarly uh, dura very similar duration notes, five year and seven year, we may have a very similar print. So look for the actual print to be, you know, markedly lower than that 4.399 that we got around last time. But, you know, that's just um, a hypothesis. We'll see if it ends up panning out. That comes to us at one o'clock, but often the case is one o'clock comes and goes and we don't have the news and the market takes a few minutes to react. That's been my, my uh, experience with these auctions, these treasury auctions. They take a little bit of time for them to respond. Quickly, we had two pr uh, auctions today, the four week bill auction and the eight week bill auction. Those are far less in importance than the seven year note. Uh, investing.com gives them a one out of three bulls, whereas the seven-year note gets two out of three. So it's up there in importance, guys. Uh, make sure to, uh, you know, be ready for any market volatility around that 105, 104 time slot. Usually takes a few minutes for the future to react, but there could be a reaction uh, to that seven-year note. Just want to let you know about that, okay? Um, Mr. Ducketts is getting some feedback on the mic. Uh, guys, I don't know what's going on over there. My mic does its own thing, and then the, one of the production team has to come over here and caress it. Oh, yeah, I've seen the caressing. Yeah, yeah. They, the they're, mic. you know, they try to get it under control. Maybe they're it's upset or something. Here's the mics. They need to be, you know, they, they need a loving touch. <laughs> right? All right, guys. The Fuge coming back in again into VWAP, uh, and by Fuge, I'm talking about, or it's above VWAP, excuse me. I'm talking about the NQ now. Um, I was going back and forth with the individual in the chat. I don't remember who. He's telling me, Sharif, what chart are you looking at on the NQ? I'm looking at it on TradingView, and we're below the Fuge. Well, I, I, I talked about this earlier. Maybe you weren't around. I do populate this particular chart from 930 onwards. So the VWAP is going to be different on this particular chart than if you were to include yesterday's aftermarket action and this morning's pre-market action. The volume weighted average price will be a little bit different in that case, 
but for this particular one, I only care about the big boy volume, and the big boy volume comes after 9.30, okay? ES, pumping back up, 48.38, awfully close to that 48.39, HOD, Mr. Katina Man, uh, which is where we got about uh, 10.45 this morning. The ES looking real good here, up 0.1. The NASDAQ up 0.11. And by real good, I just mean like moving up. Not anything super crazy, guys. So good luck there. ES pumping, NQ pumping. The next beak wetter on the NQ position is at 37s, okay? So we're now we're knocking the door of 33s. I think we just touched 33s. Uh, so we'll see what is going to pop off there. Um, I want to mention uh, AMZN because Amazon just touched that pivot point area. This big, huge green candle uh, on Microsoft, on uh, excuse me, Amazon, taking us from 53 and a half all the way to 53 and three quarters. Looks like we're finding resistance at pivot point, like we did earlier on. We got into that pivot point, um, which is the green dotted line on my chart, and we reject it. So let's see. If these higher lows that we've been putting in is, a, you know, kind of any indication of what the chart pattern will be, higher low, higher low, kind of a skewed double bottom with this being the neckline over here, we'll have to pack our patience and see whether or not we can actually get that big move up. So uh, good luck right now on the future, but uh, pining for more. C. Rowe says Nike blast off Federa, NKE. Yeah. yeah, I was looking at NK, I think, for, for C. Rowe, a little while ago, and I was not seeing, yeah, so what I was seeing with Nike is what I'm still seeing with Nike, which is we're very much headed to the high side, but I would like to see some higher lows. I mean, higher highs. And also higher lows, because we saw a slightly higher low, but nothing nothing to write home about, right? Like, not compared to this crazy, very steep upward trend we had earlier. Do you know what I mean? Looks like we might actually be making another lower high now. So I would say, you know, maybe you could argue, and, you know, I don't want to, like, go looking for patterns in the wilds that aren't here. We're not going to go chase waterfalls. We are not TLC. Go, go chase waterfalls. Yeah. That is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fail. I knew it. I knew it. I saw Sean's head moving towards the stream deck. I'm like, uh-oh. Yeah, he does it so fast, but you look... Oh. Yeah, yeah, we got no shame around here. We have no okay. shame. Very first bull saying thank you for the music. I think you're uh. the only person saying that, but we appreciate it. And you're always welcome. So, yeah, I mean, the point is, like, I think a big thing, too, I've learned, like, you know, Sharif talked about that I appreciate it is mm. you can't, like, look for patterns if they aren't there. Do you know what I mean? That being said, um, if you, the most bullish case I could make for Nike right now would be sort of, we have a bit of a bull pennant kind of going on here, right? Yeah. I say that because um, these lower highs. However, it would be more bullish if we actually had a flat top and higher lows, which we don't have. So that being said. That's the one reading our chart patterns like thank that. Thank you. Yee. I learned, I learned from you. But yeah, so I think, um, I feel like I, I, I'm kind of torn on Nike right now. I think the fact that we do see these lower lows is making me a skosh nervous. I would not say flat bottom break. We are up one third, one plus percent of the day and the flat bottom break is a continuation pattern. So for that to occur, we'd already have to be on the downside. That being said though, this lack of higher lows does make me nervous. Best case scenario, it's a bit of a compression type scenario. Interesting. There we go. Um, and then also, I did get out of the Mara short, and I got out of the Mara short, not not because, you know, the whole Nostradamus situation. You know, no one can predict the future. <laughs> but I was looking at the tape, and the scalpulation is telling me, or it was telling me, that we had a lot of, um, a bit of support there at that 29 area, so I got out of 29. Um, happy with it, about 20 cents. No complaints from me over here, but it looks like we are once again rejecting off that 29.30. 29.30, weirdly a key level here for Mara. So I'm not going to say it's a long just yet. I would like to see us break above and make a higher high decisively. So for us to make a higher high, we'd have to break above 29.80. Until we do that, I am a little skeptical of Mara being this big name to the high side. Also, because when you look at the percentage of the day, we are down 5.76%. Um, well, now, you know, that keeps changing. But the point is, to me, Mara still looks like we could have a little bit more downside action. Mm. That's all I'll say there. I stand by where I got out of that short. Also, um, I got filled in NVIDIA. I forgot that I still had that there. But um, here we go. You yeah, want to have a look at Meta here? Because oh, yes. Meta is oh absolutely God. rocketing to the high side here, yeah. Sarah, Let's look at on Meta. META. And I don't know. I look for news, but we just popped off. 359, we're on the door to 361 now. So $2 move in like a couple of minutes here. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is crazy. Yeah, you are right. This is like a $2 move here on Meta. We broke above that other high. 
we are seeing, I mean, generally, I would say higher lows. Let's see if there's any news on Meta. Also, there was some, pardon? There was some news in NVIDIA, too. I just want to say that as well, because I noticed this earlier. Um, the GeForce RTX chip GPU has launched in China. So Bang. NVIDIA oh, is according yep. to Benzinga here. Um, but yeah, look at this uh, with Meta. I think this area, this pre-market area strength of like around 360, just below 361 could be of interest, just keeping an eye on what we do there. But this is not a bad look on Meta. I do have to say this is yeah, a great it's look. We're up, up on dude. the day. Let me look at the daily on this one because the year of efficiency did seem to come to fruition. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, wow. Wow. People thought Zuck was talking out of his rear end there. Really? By the way, yeah. They're like, oh, he's just going to say the right things to get investors, you know, to alleviate their concerns. He's still going to go full force with the metaverse. He's still going to be spending hand over fist on uh, whatever. What do they call that? The metaverse part of uh, meta is called something labs? Yeah. Reality Labs. Thanks, Katina, man. Yeah, he's going to be spending hand over fist at Reality Labs. No, man, he really got it under control. He, the fact of the matter is, you know, we don't like to obviously, you know, celebrate people losing their jobs. That's not what we're doing. But, you know, there were, there had to be cost-cutting measures given the current state of the uh, uh, the uh, economy, pardon me. And he, he did it. He pulled the trigger. I got to tell you, like during 2021 and even parts of 2022, especially the early parts, I was seeing a, a, on my favorite social media app. Oh, I just got, I have to interrupt myself because I think we got the auction here and we oh, just we tanked down on the Fuge, on the NQ. Now, there is a lot of bamboozlement uh, initially here on, uh, the, like, we tanked yesterday and we rocketed back up. So we need to be very careful here. I guess Sean's in a short. What are you short? He's, he's short AMD. Sean is short AMD. It looks like it's coming down below 150 now, the Fuge. Coming back into that 17118, do we get a pop back up or what's going to go on here? So let's just wait a little bit to see and digest this information. It looks like it's headed back down, baby. Let's see what we got here on the note. Okay, it's out. 4.399 was the previous print. This time, 3.859. Okay, I'm going to have to get out of this trade. Oh, my God, I have to get out. Yeah, yeah, this is going to, I'm going to have to get out. Let's see if it's going to break 17.1 or we're going to pop, pop back up. I got to concentrate here. Uh, we're doing the dance with no pants at 17.1. Do we get bought up? I'm surprised with this move down because we did get a lower print, but I guess the market was expecting something even lower. So uh, maybe not as much exuberance in uh, the auction as uh, anticipated by the street. We're holding 17.1 for now, but for how, how long, Adara? Because yeah. that was a monster move down off that 17.1. Uh, 130 and right back into 17 one we're doing the dance here at tens 11s let's see what we get here I'll send it to you yeah Nvidia is stressing me out just a skosh we're holding okay-ish around this 497 so I'm gonna stay in this for now this is a case of I yeah I forgot I had placed my order here but I did like this long until it went wrong which is when the whole market went swoop to the downside Got a little dramatic there. Sorry, but okay. my hands are my hands are waving. Nvidia is trying to decide what it wants to be when it grows up. Hopefully, a long. Hopefully, that's what it decides. Because I still think the long case for Nvidia is very solid. We did have that strong catalyst I went into. Um, what a move down! Yeah, wow. It looks like we are sinking. I'm gonna have to. to wow, zers. Oh Seventeen but, one coming um, in. Yep. Yeah, I really dislike the look of this. We're gonna see if we can get a 497s, and I'd be um, pleased to punch at that. I just don't want to be oh. here anymore. Um, also, thank you so much to Ben Fishin. Uh, really great pun name here as well in the chat for that $99, sorry, $9.99, $9.99 super chat. Thank you so much. Singing it with the microphone. We always are singing it up in the, the midday, so we appreciate your support very much. Um, yeah, I think this is um, a really, a really interesting look. I did get out of NVIDIA. Obviously, we're now moving back up to the high side, but the thing is, I can always re-enter this trade, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait and see here. I did get really nervous when we flew to the downside. Um, but yeah, it looks like we might actually be getting back up to my point of entry. Um, yeah, lots of people talking about the spy is bleeding. Yeah, and it pumped right there. back up off 17.1. Yeah, I so literally got like... bottom wick. That's so annoying. Okay, guys, the seven-year note auction, the previous print, 4.399. This time around coming in at 3.859. So again, very similar to yesterday. If you round it to 4.4, uh, and then you round up to say 3.9, or yeah, essentially 3.9. That's basically a five handle, a five, sorry, 50 basis points right there on uh, the difference between the previous print and this time around. So the market, I guess, was looking for an even uh, lower yield to come out uh, instead of that 3.859. 
Uh, yesterday was met with exuberance. Today, not so much. You never know what you're going to get with these markets, baby. But 17.1 holding for now and a quick dip and pop on 17.1, but we are moving back down. A red candle right now on the one. So we'll see if we get that continuity to the downside. But this is why we always tell you guys about the auctions, especially the important auctions, the longer dated ones, two years and above, because they do have this market moving effect and it happens to fall during our show here because, well, that's just the, the way it's set up, baby. One o'clock comes, and if there's an auction that day, there's almost always volatility. Here we go to the downside. This could be moving the markets down, baby. We're down again below 17.1 Adera on the NQ. Look at Apple absolutely tank. It's now near low a days. It's printing lows. 193.60 AAPL giving up the ghost after knocking the door of 194 and three quarters. It is now back down to that 193 and a half, 193 and two thirds. Apple breaking down below this kind of support area here at 190, let's just say 193.90 for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's not typically an area where you expect to have a lot of support. But anyway, uh, NQ below. 17.1, what's the ES up to? Is it kind of an ES thing or an NQ thing? Well, it's both. So they're both at pivot points. Do we find some support here on the ES? Looking like it is finding at that 48.28 area. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. We end up, uh, end up red, sadly, on the futures trade, even though we had these two beak wetters up here, not by much though, as we did break that 17.1, as soon as we broke 17.1. That was it for me, baby. Big Kyle Burdett. Pumping it, says dump it, give Santa the red chimney. That's hilarious. Uh -huh. Some other dude in here. Mr. Long Shorts as well had started building a short position on MNQ, so only had two contracts. Bang out, only. Don't don't sell yourself short like that, my man. That's that's good. And he, uh, his message before that was woo, MNQ short from 17130 to 17104 all out. Shout out to you, my man. Happy you're printing even though I took an L on it, no big deal. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all I have to say about that, Adair. Yeah, no, I think um, very interesting look. Yeah, I, I did try to get back in that NVIDIA long, really small share size, legitimately the smallest you can have. It was an experiment, it failed. The reason I got back in is because I was noticing we had some decent support around 197.20. That was where I got in, then we fell. I almost got bottom wick getting out of that. I should have been a bit more patient before getting back in. I think it was a bit of a FOMO move. And in the end, I guess I had FOMO for running to the downside, I don't know. But it is what it is, I'm not gonna complain about it. The situation happened. Um, and here we are. I do think NVIDIA still could be along as long as we don't make higher lows, but I'm not going to get in that until I have more confirmation for that. Cyan Lala, Adara, long on the NVIDIA looks good since it made higher highs, although I'm short NVIDIA at 498.52. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. I, I think it looked good. I think now it's a little bit sketchier, although if we can hold up around this 496.75, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. But yeah, I might, like I said, I might get back in. I don't want to test it. Um, and congratulations on that short, because if you're taking some profit there, I have to say that is a pretty good look. We're about, I guess, more or less $2 um, down from where you entered. So that's a very nice look. Indeed, the market did fall with a viciousness there when we did fall on that um, auction. So yeah, I do, I am enjoying the look of this. Um, Dave tagged in saying market is still green, relax. Yeah, that's true. I think it's just like the, for me at least, I think the suddenness of that move, and you know, I am still in the sim, so it, Obviously a bit different, but I did see that move to the downside and was like, whoo. But um, here it goes. Uh, classy can't saying what cause, what's causing Neo to move today? Neo, as far as, oh, that is not an NQ name. One moment, please. Um, and why Neo? So as far as I'm aware, I'm gonna see if there's any specific catalyst, but I know in general, all the Chinese move, names have been moving with regards to that strength that we had going on out of China. Um, also now, apparently, this 11.15 uh, a.m. coming from Benzinga, shares of Chinese stocks are trading higher, following reports suggesting China's central bank said it would continue to boost policy adjustments to support the economy. So that could be giving a nice boost here to these Chinese names. I did try to get into this Neo Long earlier. As you can see, it did not work out. What I find interesting, though, is how well Neo was kind of holding this around VWAP area of support. We were saying earlier, we say this quite a lot about uh, Neo, uh, not Neo specifically, we say about VWAP, right? Now, VWAP isn't always going to be an area of support or resistance, but if there is confluence, shout out to Obi there, between, um, between like the VWAP and other 
stocks and everything, if we see stocks holding VWAP really well, if we see, if we see stocks holding any kind of uh, indicator very well, we should keep an eye on that. We should take note of it. And man, do I see NEO holding VWAP right now on this bottom. So I think this is a really interesting range. Are you kidding um, me, bro? Everything. Are you up. kidding me, bro? That. I'm so sad I got out of that NVIDIA long. I, this is exactly what happened yesterday. Exactly what happened yesterday. We broke down. We pumped back up. That's why I was trying to hold this because I saw it yesterday. But hey, I got I was the weak hand here. I got shaken out. What a move back up for the future, man. Off that 17-1, 21 points, 25 points. Just like that. Pass overdose says he held. Good for you, brother. At least it makes one of us here without that's not a weak hand. Shout out to you. Pass overdose. Hell of a name, though. I say that a couple of times to kind of get the uh, gist of that. But yeah, here we go. Let's see if we get anything here, though. We got a couple of wick candles below 17.1. And um, we haven't printed a newer high, though. We need something above that 17, let's just say 135 to really kind of change the trend. This is what I'm looking at over here. Right over here. So we, we were put printing higher lows, higher lows, higher highs, higher highs, upward channel. Uh, we initially had trouble with VWAP. We claimed VWAP. I sorry, we reclaimed VWAP and then boom, the auction came in and sent everything awry, tumbling this way and, and that way. Here we go, right back down to 17,115. I don't know what to make of this move. And if I don't know what to make of it, I ain't trading it. So I'm staying away from it until we find some sort of direction here. If that means missing out on the trade, so be it. But I need, uh, I need like something that I can understand. And right now we're, uh, we're all over the place. So. Gonna, yeah. gonna steer clear of the future for the moment and look for something else making a move. Everything's moving down though. Uber headed headed down, Nvidia is headed down over here. What do we got with Sidu? Sidu typically marches to the beat of its own drum. It's doing the dance here, just sub 14, but putting in a bit of a higher low, despite the fact that lower high, excuse me, not higher low, and higher low. In fact, this is a higher low relative to oh, this yeah. one over here. Bit of a compression pattern possibly forming here on SIDU. We'll see what we get there. Uh, Arco says Nike new high. So Nike doesn't seem to care about this move down the future. Just to have a look at NKE. Yeah, absolutely. Continuing to head up. Absolutely unaffected by the auction coming into that 108.70 area. 1.4% to the good right now for NKE as it looks to get off the schneid there and um, yeah, continue to, that's a good day, good day for Nike. Not much in the way of notional range. Seems to be like that bottom at 107, 106.90, and now we're knocking the door of uh, 108.70. So have a look there, see what's going on. Tesla flushing, uh, says Jason McCoy. Yes, sir, absolutely. Tesla on its way down. It is not uh, Adara's Besla. At the moment, it did this whole consolidation area here at um, S1, which is the red dotted line on my chart, holding that 258 and a quarter for the morning, and then even made another high. And then there you go, the auction comes in, and either uh, the investors don't like what they see or the algos are kicking in big here. Here it comes. We just broke 257 down into 256.71 now, the low of day on TSLA. Does this bounce or we'll have to wait and see there. But yeah, big move down on Tesla and uh, Meta didn't even realize that the auction came into yeah. uh, came in at all. Meta is absolutely pumping to the high side, awfully close to that R2 area at 361 and two thirds. We are now at that IV high that we got into at 930. That is 361.31. We're awfully close. I think we did print a new high day. What was that high day? No, 361.31 earlier on. What's this candle? 361.30. So we just, on this five-minute candle here, one penny off the high a day on META, breaking through this 360.75 uh, high crest over here. And now we're dancing with this level meta. I still don't see a headline. If you guys see a headline on Meta, let me know, but I don't see one. The last entry on my blotter is 11.37 p.m. a.m., pardon me, so about almost two hours ago, and it has nothing to do with this particular uh, move. So 
Meta, good look here. Meta is pumping with only 6.24 million shares of volume. You're right, but I gotta tell you that my experience, and I, I was in this for about six months or so holding it as a swing, it typically trades lesser volume than the Mag7 in general. Uh, save and accept, if you're including Netflix in the Mag7, then no but I don't include Netflix in the mix of it. Typically, Meta will be like the lowest volume of the bunch. Maybe Goog, G-O-O-G, a little bit less. Typically, Goog L will trade a little bit more in Meta. That's been my experience, but maybe you can fact check me on that, or going back and looking at the data, but yeah. yeah, good look. Good look indeed. Yeah, Meta does not know there's a bond auction. Mm -hmm. Meta's like, bond who? Bond what? Um, continuing to the high side. Really interesting look on that one. Yeah, it's pumping harder than it fell during MetaConnect, I have to say, mm. um, because I will always, that, that MetaConnect traumatized me. But uh, it was quite the drop. Do you also, remember that? Some you know what's, that was a crazy move. Also, Mara, still not breaking above this 2930, 2935 area. I am fascinated by this. This stock will not get over this area. And if we continue to not get over this area and we go lower, especially with the rest of the market moving down and Mara down almost 6%, mm. I might do another short scalp here. I have to tell you, I cannot lie. I see what I see and I like what I see. So we shall, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm not making any commitments to Miss Mara just yet, but I do continue to like these lower highs. I continue to like this repeated fail of this 29.35. I will say it looks like we could be a skosh kind of compression-y here. So I'm gonna be patient, but if we see decided fall below, I'll, I'll take a dip. I'll dip my toe into the water here. We can have a nice, nice swim in there. Um, Bordy's saying coin at all time high, or coin at high, sorry, Mara not in play. Yeah, I agree, like I said, I think Mara, Mara I'm looking at, but I, I'm not gonna trade it till I see more there. Coin though, is an interesting one. Yeah, coin, okay. Coin also though, I'm seeing, I, I kind of, this, this area of 186 seems to be a bit of a struggle for coin to get above. So I think that would be a skosh interesting here. I'd like to kind of wait and see what's happening. Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not gonna trade um, Mara right now. I'm seeing some other people in the chat. Like I said, yeah, I, I wanna wait till we get a decided break at this range. I just was, was watching it because I liked the whole idea of this um, one nine, one, uh, sorry, one, 29.30 as a area of resistance. I think it's an interesting look. Um, Dave pegged and saying you have to pair trade the miners with BTC. That's an, I need to keep more in mind that I will say what I've noticed is these ones are super responsive to what BTC is doing. He asked her what she thinks Coinbase's all-time high is. He does it. Okay. He, he says Can she I make a random guess? I'm going to say 230. I don't know why I'm saying 230, but I'm saying it's higher than that? 380. So, like, exactly 150 off from my guess. That's... <laughs> I like... You made a good guess. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And I appreciate that there were no expectations. You know what I mean? I was like, I, yeah. I, whatever I say is fine. I want to look at the daily now. Oh. That's, that is wild. Daily, no, you Weekly. Yeah, yeah weekly because you got to look 2021. Yeah. Oh my God. Was that intraday? That wasn't on a closing basis, was it? Go to the Katina yeah, I don't Man think screen. I'm having, I'm not thinking I'm seeing everything. That's, that, is that the IPO day? Wow. That's monthly. God, yeah, M. Yeah, That's wow. wild. That's what. Thank you for that. I, I learned a new thing today. Yeah, I did not. I was, I was like, I had no idea 380 was going to be Coinbase's move. I mean, we're definitely moving back to the upside. We'll see if that scenario can eclipse. Yeah, Andrew Hong wow. saying it was IPO day. I can go back and look. But I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Dear. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just reeling from that. Thank you, Sean, for that new fact I learned today. Diamond Realty in the Miami saying 429.54. Shout out to 305. Like that guy over there. Um, great name too, right? We have to say. But um, Meta is flying, guys. When are we going to talk about this Meta move? It doesn't make any sense what's happening here with Meta, man. Um, we just broke through R2 now on META, 361.78. Meta is continuing to go to the high side. It's at day's highs. I don't even, like, this is local highs, guys. We haven't been up here. Uh, let's go to the half an hour. Let's just make sure I'm accurate on that. Yes, this is, like, very, very, like, high in terms of, like, daily even. I don't think we've been at this level. No. 
Uh, obviously, we can go back before the, the, the shift in the, what's it called, the ticker from Facebook to Meta. That's why my chart is distorted. But we have not been at these levels at 361.86 since. Give me a second here. Yes, exactly. September 20th, the week of September 20th of 2021. We are very close to all-time highs on Meta. And by very close, I'm talking about like 25 bucks. 385, Ooh. 37, META, all-time high. Meta is 1% to the high side now, bucking the trend absolutely on the day. What is going on with META? I have no idea. I've been looking for something on my blotter. Nothing's been coming in, but something's clearly afoot here. It's not going to run on its own like this, especially on lower volume. What a day for Meta Adara. Yeah, Meta is not making Meta moves, making mega moves to the upside right now. This is wild. Um, I have, I, I like, thank you for the, the bang there. Yeah, I have, I have nothing to say other than this is, a, is that one's wild. NVIDIA um, kind of moving back up from VWAP here, but I don't want to get back involved because my attempts to trade NVIDIA earlier today have been abysmal, to say the least. At least I was trading in the right direction, right? It didn't go short in NVIDIA. I was long every time. Unfortunately, at least my points of entry happened to be wrong there. It has been quite the um, quite quite the day, for sure. Very eventful in the market. Sometimes the midday gives us these beautiful, these beautiful moments, like this crazy auction move and this crazy meta move. And all we can do Bruh. is trade them and take advantage. What is happening now? Nothing. I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I sold this thing at two hundred and thirty dollars. It's at three hundred and sixty-one dollars. I feel like yeah. a, a dingbat, as my uncle would I, I say. Like that word. Yeah, he calls me a dingbat. <laughs> um, Nick Dub Arm looking for high day break. Yes, sir. Four point eight five percent now for Arm as it knocks on the door of seventy-eight bucks. Stop console wars. M E T. A going OD, man. I see it, baby. I see it. It's up on the chart right here. 361.90. New high of day now on Meta. Ram Ram. Um, is that right? Yeah. Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Print factory on the right side of this table, baby. As um, Meta continues to the high side. I want to tell you something, though. Um, I feel like I'm not going to chase Meta at these levels because I have no idea why it's moving and I feel it's a little extended. But I, I do like this NVIDIA look right here. I'm, I have a resting uh, order to get triggered on NVIDIA if we can complete this V-shaped recovery. The reason I like NVIDIA is because of the series of higher lows and higher highs and this defend off VWAP. Yes, now I'm long NVIDIA. The, the order got triggered. So, no. No, we're still south. Um, but I do like these VWAP dip. Look at these candle wicks right into VWAP. That was the auction. We got bought up immediately above that. Couple of green candles here. The out on this one is obviously going to be the break of the low, but I'm looking for NVIDIA at least to retrace, possibly knock on the door of that 498. We'll wet our beak on that if we get a move back up on NVDA. But all the hype right now has to be meta. And I got to tell you, Softy is not a bad look either. Look at Softy continuing to head to the high side. What an upward channel here on Microsoft. All the dips uh, have been bought up, and you're clearly getting higher highs and higher lows. This is an upward channel if I've ever seen one, baby. And even that auction dip got bought up immediately on Softy. So much the same look here um, on meta. Well, no, I, I can't even compare Meta and Microsoft. Microsoft's a bit of a different beast at the moment. Um, but yeah, we'll see what we get there in NVIDIA. Let's see how this does. Yeah, I mean, yeah, NVIDIA looks like a very good look. Um, let's wait and see how that goes. Also, some talk, chat about Wu-Tang in the chat with regards to that um, Method Man reference. Uh, cash does roll everything around you when you're in the market. And when a you're dollar, trading. dollar bill, yo, yeah. dollar, dollar bill. We were talking about this, yeah, because so that, so there's the original... Um, Wu-Tang song, and there was also the remix that Wife Clef Jean did um, with Akon and Lil Wayne mm. and Naya, and so that, yeah, also okay. a great song. I, I, this is off topic, but yeah, so you know what's not on topic is thanking Benzinga, or what's not on to off topic, I mean, always on topic, Benzinga Pro, because we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. Um, if you sign up today, you can get 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters, that is TTV capital letters. All you have to do, just use the link in the description to go to checkout. Um, and yeah, we did check. Yeah. We did check. 
and you do have access to the scanner, right? which I thought, why? Okay, so it's the like one- It's like it's at this desk. Uh, the one you're logging into from here is not the one you're logging into at the front. I think that's what it is, mm, yeah. Because we, you did have access to the scanner I'm, when we looked, right? Oh, that's, it is what it is. I'm gonna find a way to get it in. But yeah, bamboozling is a good word. And then um, look, like you can see um, Ethereum to USD. Look at all the kinds of news you can see. Apple. Oh, this is interesting. Apple Chinese, Apple's Chinese partner, Luxshare, set to transform iPhone production landscape with major acquisition. Really interesting news. You know what I mean? Like it really, it's really helpful when I work on the watch list in the AM. I can see what's moving. Um, I think really helpful source to have access to. Um, so that is the the vibe with Benzing, and that's the word shout out as always, and thank you very much to them. Asharif says I do use them all the darn time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and it's a good use too. So. Very good, very good to use. Yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely. How goes Nvidia? Um, out of the money by like ten pennies at the not even back in the money right away. Uh, it's doing a, a little bit of a dance here. Let's see what we, we gonna get. Um, hoping, well, not hoping because hope is not a strategy, but. Um, my, the look that I have for it is, is if we continue this trend of higher highs and higher lows and this bullishness vis-a-vis -vis these dip trades off VWAP during the auction, we'll see if we can get that kind of move in to at least that 500-ish area to knock on the door there a bit. We did earlier. We were awfully close to 499. We got to 498.84, but retraced back down there during uh, the lead up into the auction. We started making uh, lower lows at about 12... Yeah, 1245. Uh, we'll see what we get there. The stop is going to obviously be the break of 497. So we'll have to wait and see what we get on NVDA. But Tesla is still continuing to hover at lows. Now, it is basing a little bit here, but it did that over here too. So if you were looking to take a buy off S1 on Tesla, it wouldn't have been a bad setup. And you started making higher highs. You broke through the 20 period. And then all of a sudden, the auction came and it tanked. So let's not take basing here as an, a bullish indicator because it did that here and then it went down a little bit more. So um, if you're looking for a mean reversion trade on Tesla, be careful with that um, and see, you know, see if you get that confirmation breakout. The one on Meta here though, this 361.90, a bit of a random error. You could say, okay, 362, uh, whole dollar level. But what I see here is the dotted blue line, which is resistance level two using pivot points. And it just banged off that exactly. I mean, look at the general area over here. So pivot points coming, uh, featuring again on um, on Meta like they have on the Fuge today and many other things. Let's see what we get with them. Anything going on in small cap world? People were uh, talking about Sidu not lo that long ago. Let's have a look at SIDU. Let's see what I flip back to Nike over here. Oops, SIDU, which is on the NQ. All right, so we're still below 14 bucks, although we're putting in higher lows though. So Sidu not really giving up the ghost here, even though it kind of rejected that 15 and a half area, came back down into 12 and a half. Look what it's done um, at that 12 and a half area, higher low. The trough was at 12 and a quarter. Then this trough over here, 13. Then this one over here, 13 and a third. Now we're knocking the door 14. We have a bit of a flat top-ish area, only two touches though at this flat top, so let's not put too much weight into that, around 14 and a half. So an ascending wedge, you're possibly continuing the trend because an ascending wedge is a continuation trend and definitely the trend that preceded it was awfully, awfully bullish. So we'll see if we get that 14 and a half decided break on SIDU, maybe even test high days at around that 15, 40-ish area. Yeah, that's a, that's a I, SIDU is a really, uh, SIDU, a uh, really interesting look for sure, indeed. Um, we're not we're not going lower. It's interesting because a lot of these small caps tend to lose steam. We are above right. VWAP. We have broken above pre-market highs, which I know are like your two kind of qualifiers for small caps. Not, oh, yeah. Yeah, not really a bad look at all, I have to say. Um, what else is, is looking interesting right now? Um, Tesla has just, the Cybertruck has driven off the highway at this point. Um, I really wish I had gotten to that short a different place than where I got in because this is like, this is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Tesla, this thing keeps driving yeah. off of the cliff. We're going lower. Um, yeah, Tommy is saying Tesla keep down, not with the market. Yeah, I, it, it's definitely moving counter trend. Indeed, was there a story on Tesla today? I'm not. Um, oh, yeah, there was. I guess there. Um, 
Elon Musk was getting upset at some Tesla bears. Apparently, that's definitely not what's moving the stock. Elon, what did thing. Elon do? He was. He said he didn't like what some of the Tesla bears had to say. I guess. Yeah. Well, I don't blame him. I, I mean, mean, if people fair. are shorting your company, would you like them? No. No. Never mind. I actually was watching um, some old crime show the other day. Mm. I think it was called Cold Case, and there was a whole thing where like this girl was like, because they show flashbacks, and she's like, "Why are they shorting my company? I'm gonna find out who they are." Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Like, honestly, it's, it's interesting. Like, how many times stock references come up in in things, and now it's like I get it. So. So, Did you cool. hear about the little uh, dynamic between Bill Gates and Elon Musk? No. You didn't know about this? No, oh, this was not. before you joined up. So Bill Gates reached out to our friend Elon, and he's like, uh, hey, Elon, you want to donate a little bit to my uh, whatever Melinda and Bill Gates fund? Because he has a big mm -hmm. charity, right? And Elon's like, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, obviously, is it, is it like for the environment or whatever it was? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh. Do you still have that short position on Tesla, though? He's like, yeah, yeah, about a quarter billion dollars. That's M not insane. Bill Gates had a, was it a quarter billion? Do you remember what it was? It was something like that. Fact check me, chat. It was about a quarter billion dollars position short on Tesla, and he was reaching out for him to, like, do something for the environment. He's like, Ooh. why would you be shorting Tesla, the company doing the most for the environment? That I'm not saying he is. Yeah. I'm just saying what Elon Musk responded and said to Bill Gates. Um, and then, with a straight face, asked me for help. So they uh, that so he's was, got his hand in a couple different pies there. I guess that was the implication. There you go. James 500 Bell million. Game of Thrones, yeah. Thank so you. 500, 500 billion. Oh, my God. So that's half a bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not chump change. It's not chump change. Um, Bill Gates got crushed on that too, it says Michael Mulvey. I'm not really sure exactly what the uh, outcome of that Bill Gates short position was. I'm not sure what his price was, so we can't really make any analysis on that, but just telling you this whole story because of the thing. Like, yeah, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah, you're probably not going to be like in vibing with the person shorting your company. At least I would. No, that, that's a fair point, but yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's interesting that... Um, yeah, I, I was not fully, like, aware of, I guess, like, that, that whole Bill Gates situation. That makes sense. But, yeah, no, I just think it's interesting that um, this is popping up on um, Benzinga over here. I am seeing um, India, I guess, reporting that there are negotiations with Tesla to set up the manufacturing plant. Those are coming to a close. So that would, I guess, be a positive catalyst, one would think. But, you know, that like, so, yeah. the market does not care about your feelings, and Tesla does what Tesla does. And often what Tesla does today, at least, is drive its little cyber truck down the wrong side of the highway, yeah. apparently. It's uh, a DJ move. Price uh, saying, don't know how Tesla went from peak 1200 down to 300. There was a split in there, so that's not split adjusted. Um, I think the peak split adjusted, I can look for you, but it's definitely not. The, the 440, the Katina Man says, that's typically the split adjusted high. Uh, I'll do it, Katina Man, I got it. Here it is. Uh, we'll take out this one candle over here because it's distorting everything. There we go. All right, Katina, man, you are right. It was around that 420 area. Shout out to 420. So that is, uh, I believe that's the high. Check. I don't know if you have that on. Right. Is it right? Okay, yeah. So that's a split adjusted, my man. Uh, it wasn't 1200 was the price before he, he split it again. He split a couple of times. The most recent one was um, August of 2022. He did a three to one. Prior to that, it was September 2020 or August, I forget, uh, five to one at that time. So Tesla's been split like twice already the past few years. So that's the price there. I don't want you to get the idea that it was 1200 pre-split. No, it hasn't tanked that much. That is a ridiculous amount to tank, but it wouldn't be uncommon, Adara, for some of the, the highs that we made in 2021 for there to be a 1,200 high and a 300 current action. I, your, your example on Coinbase yeah. set that up. Even though Coinbase has been rocketing up lately, still nowhere near the highs. Yeah, no, Coinbase is $150 off of the highs. I think I guessed $50. I don't remember. Yeah, no, I get. No, sorry. It's about like 200 off the highs then because I think I guessed 150 off the highs. Yeah, we, we're continuing to skyrocket. Still a good look on the day as well, but I would like, I really like this whole area. I think of um, resistance becoming support. This 186.09, we seem very stuck here. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, also, there are a few rounds with AMC in the chat mm. saying, Hope Gates had a stop loss, LOL. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I got a kick out of that. I don't even know what the result of the, the trade is. I really want to do a quick Google search while you're yeah. talking to find out what his. Uh, uh, if anybody knows, I mean, I yeah. have no idea. Some people were saying that he got rinsed on it, and 
I, I mean, know. yeah. You got a lot of money, right. so. I think in some ways, too, what, what's more interesting about that story is just the fact that there was, you know, that, that's this whole, like, him going to Elon and Elon being like, nah, uh, uh Like, I yeah. think to me, that's more interesting than actually the uh -huh. outcome, right, in some ways. So I think, you know, the whole idea of the, the journey is more interesting than the station, that would be my case with that story there. Um, but, yeah, no, I do, I, I don't mind the look of coin. I just think this area of support consolidation kind of throughout the day of this 186 is something I would be very cognizant of. Mm. Vince Jane, this is an interesting discussion. People in the chat definitely populate this discussion. I love like it. This. Vince Jane kicking it off with, is NVDA the stock of the year in 2023? I think, I think it would probably be in a lot of people's discussions. I think, you know, it really probably depends also, pe different people trade different kinds of things, right? So I'm sure if you're more of a small cap person, your stock of the year is probably going to be a lot different than people trading mega caps. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? So I think that's Here it is. So according to Walter Isaacson, who wrote the book for uh, the, the biography on Elon Musk, uh, he writes in his book here, but things turned sour in a hurry when the subject of Gates' shorting Tesla stock came up. Isaacson wrote that Gates had placed a big bet that Tesla stock would drop in value. And when he turned out to be wrong, he had lost about one and a half billion by the time of their meeting. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I'm not vouching for the accuracy of that. But that's re what's being reported here by GeekWire.com. I like that website. Uh, a cool billy and a half. If that's accurate, that's an insane amount of money to get rinsed on on a short. Because, again, you know this, and you've been shorting a lot lately, unlimited potential liability for a yeah. short. It can go to infin infinity, whereas if I'm long a stock, I go to zero. Yeah, I lose fair. my investment. But, wow. Yeah, it's, it's not a lot of money for him, Lolo. I get it, but that's still a ridiculous amount. He's probably not happy taking that L, whether he can afford it or not, really isn't the point. You know, Nobody wants to get a rinsed for a billion and a half on one trade, right? Like, I mean, I don't care how much money I have. Um, anyway, I don't think Bill Gates is well-liked, um, generally, from what I get in popular culture. He's, you know. Neither here nor there. Yeah. All right, we just got a beak wetter here on NVDA as we came back up into that 498 area. Nothing really to celebrate. I'm looking for continuously higher highs on NVDA, possibly to come back into that 498 and a half, 499 ish area. Uh, but it's been, you know, a kind of hard row ho lately on, on NVDA, especially after the pops off VWAP rejected or popping off that 496 and a half moving back into 498 but I feel like we're finding resistance here at that 498 area for uh, for some reason the future just popped up into 17137 and then just quickly rejected back down about 10 points back into 17127 now at 130 we'll see if we can get continuity but Bit of a bamboozling trade on some of these uh, large caps today. Let, trying to see if we can get that momentum on NVIDIA. Get going, baby. Let's go. Uh, big Diamond Realtor Miami. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to read that. But I get your point. I get your point. You know, he's, he's, he's being accused of a lot of stuff. And by that, I'm talking about Bill Gates. Um, stop console war it says I'm mad at myself on snap I remember telling bears versus bulls that snap would bounce off eight or nine when it plummeted off that bad quarter in the summer and I didn't get it it's all good man I mean don't kick yourself for the stuff you didn't take there's nothing you can do about that you had the right idea it shows you ha you are of sound mind you have the the uh, the good view the critical analysis here on the stocks I still hold the position that Snap is a good buyout candidate. I don't know how many active daily users they have. Say that again, Katina, man. Where did you hear that? Well, uh, you, you were one of the people. I got to give you credit. You, uh, you, all, you all good there? The Katina man is looking to go long on Microsoft as it knocks on the door of 376. Uh, nice day for softy. Um, what was I going to say? I was, I was talking about uh, Snap. Thank you. Yeah, I still think it's a good buyout target. A lot of daily active users. And my niece and nephew are staying with me right now. And they are all over that platform. Whether they can use younger users to monetize some way, somehow, that's a whole different story. But you can't tell me that these users aren't worth X amount, right? Um, especially, like, you know how my sister does it? with them? I know they're a little bit older, so they have their own money. But when they were younger, 
she would like, okay, she'd be like, okay, so here is what needs to be done around the house. And she put up a list on the wall and each chore had a price beside it. Right? I like this. Yeah. Okay. And the, the harder chores, obviously, you got more money for. The, the, the less complicated chores, you got a little bit less. And so whoever did the chores at the end of the week or the end of the two weeks would be entitled to their earned allowance. And so they could get that allowance in many different ways. You get yeah. an e-transfer, you get credits for your, uh, your top-ups or whatever it's online. Very clever. Yeah, yeah. So she, she was doing that with them, and I thought that was really good. I like that. Um, okay, NVIDIA just tanked here. At 497 and a third. Uh, I don't know what the hell's going on with NVDA, but we're gonna have to be really careful. The out on NVIDIA is gonna be the break of 497. We already got a beak wetter as we knocked on the door of 498, but NVIDIA coming right back down here as the future, you know, very, very undecided in what the hell it wants to do. Popped up into 30s, now it's back in the low 20s. I'm at a loss for words. I have no idea where this game is going today. Benton C, Arsenal game today. Yes, my friend, we take on West Ham at home. We are heavy favorites to win this one, and we better win because Liverpool took care of business a couple of days ago against Luton, and we we're only separated by one point. I got to tell you, I'm pleased as punch to take a phrase from Adara <laughs> that Aston Villa got their rear ends handed to them by United, and I never, ever celebrate Manchester United wins because I dislike them so much. But they did take care of business against Aston Villa, who is quickly becoming a serious competitor for the league, at least so far, under the uh, instruction of Unai Emery, a former Arsenal manager. They uh, lost 3-2 at Old Trafford. It was a hell of a game. I haven't seen the highlights yet, but it looks as if uh, that Hoyland guy that they picked up in the summer scored in the 82nd minute to propel them north. Obviously, City took care of business yesterday, beating Everton at Ever in Liverpool. 3-1 uh, City uh, looking, you know, a little bit better after I don't know how many ties they had there in a row. Let's just check that real quick. City, oh, wow. City tied, lost. Okay, anyway. Uh, yeah, City, City's been having a lot of trouble lately. But they, uh, you know, they still have a game in hand too, by the way, because their game against Brentford got postponed because they had that Club World Cup. So City's got game in hand, and they're at 37 points. Arsenal at 40 uh, with a game to play today. So we'll have to see how Arsenal does today. Yeah, no, I mean, go, go sports. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I find, I find the Prem very interesting. I will say as well that I'm so fascinated by that Luton. I think it was Luton Town, that stadium that was basically backyard. I, you know, I have nightmares about that sometimes. No, I'm joking. I'm just, like, very shocked by that um, existing. Also, did you see this lovely chat from Zion Lala? What do you say? Um, Sharif, I'm a huge fan of yours. Although I don't watch soccer, I bought my little three-year-old Arsenal jersey. Hashtag Sharif fan. That's very sweet. That deserves a thousand bands right there. Shout out to you, Zion, Arsenal, best team in the world. Uh, at least, you know, that's what I'd hope. Yeah. Uh, we're doing real good this year. We did real good last year under Mikel Arteta, and hopefully, you know, we're spending too. Oh. We're spending too. Um, Ed Nuts, Aston Villa will fade. I'm hoping they will, but all that comes to mind when I see that is 2016. And you know what happened in 2016, Leicester City. Everybody, the entire year, Leicester City is going to fade. They can't maintain this. And then they won the dang league. Oh, so yeah. basically you're saying, like, don't, don't say anyone's going to fade because you Because sometimes they don't, right? Like, okay. Leicester City, all I can think of is 2016, Jamie Vardy, uh, Riyad Mahrez, uh, everybody else that was on that team at the time. Yeah, that was, uh, that was definitely a year to remember. So, um, that's, that's We are winning the league, says Bishow Bisho Karki. Man City says VWAP. I like your name, VWAP. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's great. I love that. Yes, Liverpool, bruh, says Ponzi. Uh, Ronnie says, what a year. Yeah, Leicester almost won Champions League. That uh, that team, too. I don't know if they won almost. Where would they get into? They got into, like, with a quarterfinals or something? I don't remember. Anyway. Yeah. I'm with Sharif. <laughs> All right. Distract with sports, says John Spruill. Yeah, we got to mix it up a little bit here, my man. Uh, we we'll talk a little bit of sports, a little bit of stocks, sometimes music. A lot of bit of stocks, yeah. sometimes, yeah, sometimes 90s rap exactly. references. We do what we can. 
Semis, uh, says James Dell. Uh, Arm, knocking on the door, 5%, 77.89, Adara. Yeah, no, I was just, I just saw Paul D in the chat with um, Shy Ronnie, which is, a, I believe, a reference to that SNL sketch with Andy Samberg. Mm. So had to shout that out. Um, also, Tesla just being really fascinating. And why I say that is, clearly it's a short, but I like the way that it's kind of doing these consolidative um, areas. Um, Michael Moore saying, what does Tesla want to be when it grows up? Shaking my head. I am also shaking my head. I don't know what it wants to be when it grows up, but I think probably a short. Probably and why I say that is, look what we were doing earlier. We keep having these kind of curved, rounded bottoms and then continuing to fall to the downside. So look at this. Um, we, you know, we kind of came back into that consolidation area. And then what did we do? Swooped right back down. This guy does not want to chill. Tesla is... Um, very much stressful right now, but yeah, I would not be shocked if we can even fall back to the downside here because I know sometimes these rounded bottoms, you know, by the roundy face, by the smiley face, mm -hmm. move back to the upside. Uh, usually this would go up, but I mean, like, Tesla does not really want to play this game, which I think is really interesting. And also, oh, what I've noticed is the other two times we did this, where we fall off from is kind of where we had a big candle of, of you know, whatever the opposite of candle of indecision is. Candle of decision, I'll call it that, because I know you, you know you talk about the candle yeah. of indecision. I will call it candle of decision. This is a massive candle of decision here. We fall oh, to the downside, then we street. come back up, get back there, fall back down. Same here, this big candle of decision, guess where? We come back there and then fall back down. Now we just seem to be falling down all willy-nilly here on Tesla. Either way, no matter how many, how much I cover it with flowery verbiage, Tesla is falling to the downside. Down. Down. Um, also, yes, yeah, so Paul D said that, yeah, that, that is Gold Love some SNL. Okay, I'm happy I got that correct. Also, support staff um, in the super chat. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. If you don't have $500 million to stay in the NYSE, how do they maintain the listing on MBIA NYSE price target 128? Um, MBIA, oh, why? Yeah, that's my bad. You literally said NYSE and I just typed NQ. That's a, that's a moment here for me. Smack yourself in the head a little bit there. Um, MYBA, I'm not seeing, are you seeing this MY, M, MBIA? Yes. MBIA, I, okay, so Mitsubishi Corporation. It's an oh. ADR, so it's Mitsubishi, obviously. Yeah. Uh, it trades, no, okay. MBIA, what? Okay, that's not on our exchange. I don't know what FWB2 is. I don't know what exchange that is, but um, I don't have data for it. But it seems to be Mitsubishi. Ask, is it Mitsubishi? Um, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, okay, let's bring in trade ideas because I got that one up here as well. MBIA, MBIA. It's the other way around, Neil. Okay. I don't. Uh, MBIA, MB. I have. Oh, MBI. So it's MBIA company, but the ticker is MBI. I'm assuming. I don't know. Who's uh, asking? Oh, it was um, support staff in the super chat here. Okay. So um, support staff, tag me or tag Adara again um, because, it, yeah, this is probably it. MBI trades on the Nizi. It's, it's a tiny company, $43.5 million market cap, about five and two-thirds percent float. Um, oh, sorry, that's not the market cap, though. That's the, uh, that's the float, 43.95 million. What is the market cap? MBI. MBI market cap, 314 million. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, I have no idea about this stock. Do you want to have a look at the charts? MBI. MBI, yeah. On, on the NYSE. Oh, it's MBI. Okay, so it's not MBIA. Okay. Well, M the company's name is MBIA, but the ticker is MBI. Oh, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so here it is. Um, it, it's a look, it's a look, I'll say that. Um, I would say what I am seeing right now on um, intraday, and I'll go to the daily in a minute, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, right? So we did have a bit of a move to the upside. Now it looks like we're kind of falling off to the downside here. Um, the other thing too is we're up only about 0.4% on the day. So it's like, what, to me, when we're up this little, it could kind of go either way. Volume on, on this is not significant, really, but it's not super insignificant either. It is over 500K. We're at about 750K from what I can tell here on P Pro. Oh, Wait. I got to go. Um, I'm oh, yes. with you, okay? Of course, yes. So, Sharif, you will see him on the big desk in 10 minutes. But for now, you'll just have to spend some time with me as we go over MBI and some other charts. Ooh, this daily on MBI is also a look. But we have really strong support. I like the support that we have at 614 kind of area. 
We did kind of careen to the downside here. Um, a flat channel that kind of fell to the downside. This was, I guess, almost like a bit of a consolidative rounded top here. Um, starting May 30th and kind of ending around September 21st here. Um, before that, we had moved to the upside, fell down, slightly fell back up, slightly lower low here. Um, and then we landed lowest point around October 23rd, 633. It started to have November to remember a little bit earlier than some of the other stocks. Then we shot right back up here to see some more stories in MBI here. Um, oh, so December 8th. Uh, it just, I declared a cash dividend of $8 per share. So yeah, that was when we had this big move to the upside, that cash dividend day. Then we um, kind of had a, a bit of a double top around 14.2, fell to the downside, and then now we're still hanging out at the SIG 14. So it's a very topsy-turvy look, I have to say. Um, it seems very catalyst responsive. I have a feeling that this name, much like a lot of these kind of um, smaller stocks, We'll kind of do how it does and wait for its moment in the sun. The spotlight goes on it, it, it flies, and then it kind of tames down a little bit, right? That would be my take on MBI uh, looking at it right now. But yeah, we definitely flew up off of that $8 dividend, $8 per share dividend. Some mentions of Sing here. So let's look at Sing. Um, let's see how, you know, if it's singing right now. Oh. Oh, I'm on the daily chart. That's my bad. Yeah, this, this daily chart, I think Shreve and I mentioned the daily chart and saying earlier, but this daily chart, much like all these small caps, is very wild. I do like, um, I mean, what I like here is that honestly, like we do see slightly higher lows, but we are also seeing lower highs. So I think it, it could be a Scotia compression-y. I would probably like to see a high above this 12 area, 1250. This one also ran yesterday. This was that ADHD um, medication related catalyst. So this is, um, yeah, I think a really interesting one to look at. If people are looking at anything in particular, you want some opinions, you know, tag me, put it in here, mention the stock, let me know so we can take a look. I'm not trading anything right now. Um, I traded a bit, I'm uh, sure you're saying pump it. I traded a little bit earlier today. I just, it was not really working. I was, I do not think I was on my A game today. Still in the sim, learning and hopefully growing. I did have the short on Mara earlier that I liked. Um, I, I got in initially on this move way too early. We broke above VWAP. And again, VWAP is not always going to be an area of, I guess, um, movement or an area of interaction. But today it really was. We kept darting around VWAP. I saw these lower highs. I got in on the short um, too early because uh, I was, you know, I was scalpulating and I was watching the tape. And I saw, you know, on the tape, we did have a little bit of, um, it was a bit of an area where it kind of moving down on here, right? We had some decent resistance at this 2880. Alas, it was not to be. Went, uh, got out at VWAP. Then when I saw, again, resistance on the tape at this 29.30, I waited for a second candle, went to the downside, took that short until I noticed, again, looking at the tape here, this $29 area. And then I got out. But yeah, we held this 29.30 as a top very nicely. And when we fell, we fell with a vengeance. Fell right back down, basically a dollar here, picking up a little bit at this 28.30, 28.35 area. So that's about a dollar of movement to the downside here. We have not made a lower low, so that is something, but also it's been many moons since we've seen a higher high on our good pal Mara over here. So we're gonna have to wait and see, but it looks like right now Mara is running a marathon to the downside. Um, yeah, thank you, Havana Woody. Yeah, scalpulating, I'm trying to make it happen. Basically, it's like me doing scalps while also kind of keeping an eye on the tape as well. So we're calculating, you know, trying to find good places to enter and exit. That's my take on that. Also, AMC is lurching, says Lake South Tiger. I like that name. It's it's very, very interesting name here. Um, New York AMC. Oh yeah, lurching is right. AMC is just moving all over the dang place. Um, I think the fact that we didn't make a lower low here is interesting, but AMC also is, I mean, this one was a mean stock. It definitely does what it wants to do. In the pre-market, and even a little bit after we opened, we did have this nice move to the high side on AMC. Then we fell pretty hard around the 650 area, kind of made um, definitely stutter step to the downside, lower highs, uh, maybe lower lows, except we did pause here at this uh, 624. Looks like we want to make a bit of a bottom here. We're going to have to see what happens. Steven's saying market will have a new high by close. Let's find out. Let's, let's, let's see on that. I think that could be um, very interesting. I'll pull up the spy here so we can take 
a look-see at that at this moment. Feels percolate. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry, these dark pool wicks. But, um, but yes, yeah, spy slightly positive, definitely been doing that, kind of the snake action, hovering just above VWAP and a little bit below VWAP. Holding VWAP really well, though, I think is a really interesting look um, on the spy. Let's look at um, the cues. I'll do, I'll do TQ. Oh, these, this has to be on the NQ. There we go. So we're gonna give me a moment here. There we go. So yeah, TQQQ. Um, okay. Okay, actually really, this is an interesting look. I don't wanna say flat bottom break because A, I'm trying to not find patterns everywhere and B, you know, um, these, it, it, we are still slightly up on the day, but flat bottom break, kind of. Look at this really interesting bottom we have around this 5156, 5158 area. Lower high, lower high, lower high. I mean, I also think it'd be, you know, Santa Claus rally, who knows if it'll actually materialize, but I think it is interesting that TQQQ does have these lower highs and somewhat of a flat bottom going on over here. Um, so I think this is an interesting, um, Look, also, Finch Jane, Tesla's being shorted out. Sorry for the pun. You never have to apologize for puns here on the midday slash how to trade. I will be making them all the time. And yeah, that is, it. Tesla has, really does look like the shorts are having their fun on Tesla. I swear every time I look at this, we're another dollar to the downside. Like I said, we keep doing this thing where we have the curved bottoms and then falling back down there. Um, this is, yeah, this is quite the look to the downside here. I want to look at the daily on Tesla, see what kind of levels we've got. Yeah, it's really interesting. We sort of double topped here at this two, 260 area. And I say that because look, this is where we kind of fell off um, a little bit before we had that massive move to the downside after Elon Q3 conference call gate. But um, no, I'm joking. It's just that, you know, the conference call that, the conference call heard around the world, I guess. But yeah, we definitely did fall off of this double top here. So it's a, certainly an interesting look. We did also see a lower low here. Um, but generally, since uh, early November, since the November to remember began, we've very much been in shout out to Sharif for that. Have to give credit where it is indeed due. I do like this upward trend on Tesla, but I do think we're coming into a super key area of resistance at this 265. Next would be, I would say, about this 278, 280. We'll have to wait and see on that. Though, also, um, what else is going on here? Um, I thought I saw a mention of NVIDIA. Oh, yeah. Pacific Standard, NVIDIA, back down to 497. Yeah, it, it indeed, if it will load. Oh, this is the daily still. Oh, NVIDIA is kind of interesting on the day because we do have these um, lower highs and kind of a flat top. I don't want to make any assumptions, or sorry, higher lows and sort of a flat top. No assumptions to be made here yet. You know, going to let the, the action dictate what is happening, but I will say that's interesting on the daily. Intraday though, yeah, NVIDIA keeps darting around this 497 area. Decent support around 497. Um, and because 497 also is around where VWAP happens to be hanging out right now. Earlier, we were seeing a bit more of a bullish case, I would say, with these higher highs, higher lows. Still seeing higher highs slightly, now slightly lower high, or sorry, lower low. High, yes, lower low. But yeah, certainly an interesting look here with this lower high. Could we be compressing? We're still up on the day. I would say, yeah, watch video around VWAP. It does seem to like bouncing off of VWAP at this point. Um, so I think that's certainly an interesting look at Pacific Standard saying v NVIDIA waiting for VWAP test at 496.55 near below. Yeah, good look there. Um, what uh, Some mentions of Boeing here in the chat as well. Let's take one final look at Boeing, seeing uh, where, where will its flight plan lead us to? Are we leading to the downside or the upside? Um, thank you, Sharif. But yeah, ooh, okay. Looks like Boeing's kind of losing its wings a little bit here. Um, really interesting move to the downside earlier. Ton, tons of consolidation pre-market. Swooped to the downside. A little bit of consolidation fell back down. Then we saw a little bit of support around 257.80. And all we got to was this 259.2. So we continue to see, yes, lower lows. Lower highs, lower lows. Right now, they were doing a bit of, you know, I, I'm... A little bit of consolidation here. It could be consolidated top, except we're down on the day. And consolidated top is usually a bit more reversal-ish. 
So not really sure what to say here. Thank you, Paul ID, calling me the pun master flex. I really like that. Um, I thank you for that one there. But we are looking to wrap up the midday and head into the, the big desk. So I will say adieu. We will see you tomorrow for the last trading day of 2023. Same bad time, same bad channel. But for now, Sharif is at the big desk. Hey guys, welcome to the close. The market's very stagnant right now. The NQ up 0.02, the ES up 0.03. But what isn't stagnant is oil. Oil headed aggressively to the downside here, guys. 2.83% as it gives up much of the week's gains. Uh, 